Wanderers, welcome to episode 215. Yeah. Season two, episode 15. Now, before we jump into another toasty, quince, toasty episode, a friendly reminder. If you're not watching or listening on YouTube, stop what you're doing. Head on over to YouTube and subscribe. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed. If you're watching on Spotify and listening to on Spotify, make sure you like us on Spotify. We're also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Santa Claus Exterior Cleaning Services. Ho, ho, ho. Hello there. It's your old pal Santa Claus. Yes, the Santa. And I'm here to talk to you about one of my very favorite companies, Santa Claus Exterior Cleaning. They do it all. Low pressure roof and exterior washing, pressure washing, and even concrete sealing. Gutter clog removal? Check. Window cleaning that will make your reflection wave back at you? Double check. They also have specialized procedures for cleaning food processing areas, solar panels, and even memorials and headstones. Now hold your reindeer. They don't just like the dirty work. They're introducing a brand new product this year. Decorative concrete coating. Four times stronger than epoxy, and it's tougher than your mother-in-law's fruitcake, and will last longer than a New Year's resolution. It will never fade, chip, or peel. On top of that, it comes with a limited lifetime warranty, because no one likes returning presents. They're not all soaps and suds, though. Since day one, they've donated 10% of their profits back to local children in need. Kind of like me, but they don't break into your house at night for cookies. Their technicians are OSHA certified, professionally trained, and can help you with residential, commercial, or industrial projects. So if your place looks like it hosted the after party for the naughty list, call Santa Claus Exterior Cleaning. They'll clean it up. 812-545-7050 or santaquotes.com The Wandering Dutchman Podcast Where none of us are Dutch But we all live in Holland, Indiana Except for Couch Kai Join us where we talk about What we all wonder about This is the Wandering Dutchman Podcast Coming to you from... Smoker's Lounge. The Wandering Dutchman. Yeah. Yeah. The Wandering Dutchman. Yeah. Here we go. Back uh. in the saddle we are. Back in the saddle we are. Uh, sitting across from me in a very nice long sleeve Carhartt blue collar kind of shirt, Dave, mm -hmm. is our buddy Big Mace rocking the plaid and flannel sitting in the middle of the table with his I'm sexy and I mow it koozie because Dave is always in mowing season is David Allen Smoker, also known as Dave, also known as Smoke, also known as Smoke Daddy, also known as Smoke Dragon. Also known as a couple other things we a can't king of the say. Castle. King, of the king of the castle. castle. King of the castle. And I am Casey. That's it. Esquire. 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 Even though I don't say it. So we're here. Episode 215. Wait a minute. Ooh. What? Over my right shoulder that's out of frame that no one could see. Couch, Couch guy. guy. Couch Guy is back, ladies and gentlemen. Even though you don't see him. He's here. He's here. Which actually, you know, he kind of fooled us because we thought he had this romantic mountain getaway with his beautiful bride. <laughs> Turns out it was a big old meat fest. Bunch of dudes <laughs> sitting in a hot tub <laughs> together, <laughs> drinking, smearing off ice and Artois. twisted teas. <laughs> well, Couch Guy is back. So we got a full barn. It's episode 215, which means we're at season two, episode 15. Today's date is... January 31st, 2024. This will be airing on February 9th, 2024, where it shall live on the history pages of YouTube and Spotify. Forever. YouTube forever. 
So that's you know, exciting. A quarter of a season is only 13 episodes. Not a damn. We're already past the 25% mark of this season. It goes way too fast. <laughs> yeah, it does. People forget we don't go on a calendar year are or a fiscal cameras, year. Are all those cameras recording? What in the hell is there a wash doing? It's well, warm. The heater's on. Oh. Well, the heater, not the imaginary fireplace. Wash-pa, yeah, pizza wash-pa, stove. Wash pot. Wash pot. Wash pot. Yeah, it is. Uh, Big Mace, what's going on this week? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I found out I got a tumor in my leg. Mm. Well, that's a, that's it's a tumor. A, it's kind of a Debbie Downer. I don't know what it is. Uh, so that the real gnarly foot pain that I've been having, um, went to the uh, podiatrist to see a neurologist or a doctor that specializes in n- n- neuropathy. And for all you uh, TikTok users, no, I'm not diabetic. I've got a pinched nerve in my foot. Not from diabetes. Bitches. Yeah. Bitches. Yeah. The Diabetes yeah. Coalition. But actually, anyway, here's what go before ahead. you go. Mm-hmm. We actually do have somebody in the room that has diabetes. Oh, yeah. Couch Little guy. Fella. The guy that's yeah, the, the best, skinny shit the, back here on the couch. <laughs> the guy that's in the best shape yeah. is the yeah. one that's the diabetic. <laughs> oh, He's, sweet irony. That's right. Uh, but no, I gotta gotta go for an MRI and figure out what that thing is. He says it might be a cyst or a a tumor or some sort of uh well not all tumors are no you know cancer we yeah hope. we hope not yeah. yeah i don't want to end up on cancer talk no. No. oh no. shit man you got to stay away from that man, my spot. talk has it been tough. in all sorts of weird pl- i've been into palm well, save reading for a little week. bit palm save reading. for a little bit <laughs> anything else this week uh no nope. smoke dragon what about you uh well it's been a real shit show of a week so far we come out of sunday <laughs> blazing off of the mics i get into monday then i'm just a working and then a tuesday and now it's wednesday and we've been trying to get everything posted up for friday i gotta wake up in the morning go to work then i gotta leave work go to wayne county then we're gonna be slicing and dicing some beef for muchos horas yeah and then I'm going to make the the red eye drive back to put that beef in the freezer mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then sunday Gosh, I'm going to try real hard to sleep in on Sunday. That's I thought you were cutting pigs on Sunday. No, no, no. We're cutting pigs next, next Saturday. Oh, yeah. We got yeah. two weekends of slicing and dicing. Yeah. This next guy's Saturday, I'll hopefully. Glutton for punishment. Yeah. Be able to help out next Sunday. Yeah, it'll be two hogs should take probably two, two and a half hours on the first one. The second one will take half of that. So it'll yeah. be a pretty good. Good. You know, well, pretty good time. I think it'll all work out for you, Dave. Yeah, it, it absolutely will. It's just <laughs> been a... A whirlwind, you know. Uh, what about you, bub? Well, I tell you what. We are uh, trying to get caught up because the last three weeks to start uh, January have been a little rough on time and other things. And uh, we got uh, baseball getting ready to get started. First practice right. on Sunday. Uh, first practice on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting started. Um, but just had that scheduling meeting on Monday. Mercy. Work on t- work's been super busy for some reason. Just a lot of stuff going on. Um, like I don't really, I, I work, but there's different paces of work. I mean, I'm sure oh, we sure. all understand yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This last couple weeks have been just breakneck speed, and so starting to see a little light at the tunnel. Day in the pipe, the tunnel. Yeah. So yeah. needed to kind of relax a little bit. I actually needed to get warm so I can hide out of the office and go play golf. Mm. That's probably what I really need. So. Got to take a work trip in April. Mm-hmm. So uh, we already got the golf course selected. It's between yeah. the airport and the hotel. So that'll be my first game of the year probably. Yeah, there you really? go. Out there in Anaheim. You huh. going to you gonna sport the polo shirt? Oh, I'd, I'd say it's probably, probably. It should be polo shirt weather. I won't oh, be wearing flannels yeah. out there. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Hey, let's get into our one. Yeah, let's hear from him. Let's do and it. our buddy, Matt Krieg. Hour one is presented by Matt Krieg of Krieg Insurance. I was on the Googler machine looking up some things, and I came across the list that had the top 10 traits of successful insurance agents. They ranged from problem solver and self-motivated to honest and resilience. The two that really stuck with me were passionate and good listener. By the time I finished the list, I realized that I was looking at the traits of our buddy, Matt Krieg. Whether you are looking for life insurance, health insurance, or Medicare supplements, Matt Krieg is dedicated to helping you and your family. 
give Matt a call today and see what he can do for you. Put her there, brother. <laughs> Big thank you to our pal Matt Creek. He's, yeah. he's become an institution around for here. Sure. The Merkley boys get all the glory. Hope Outdoor Power gets a lot of the glory. But our buddy Matt Creek's oh, right yeah. there. He's in there. He's oh, right yeah. there. Yeah. So we let's break down the fourth wall. Let's break it down. Him. The origin story of like this Miley show. Cyrus. Oh. We're, she, we're coming in at you like a wrecking, wrecking ball. ball. Huh. Oh, okay. Uh, the origin story of this podcast was three dummies that wanted to sit around and drink beer and record it and have fun with it. And not saying that we're not having fun with doing all this. Yeah, because that'd be inaccurate. Yeah, that would be inaccurate. We have too much fun. Mm-hmm. And after Sunday, if you could see what was in the trash can, oh, my. it would have been a bad day and to be a beer. it's not dead hookers, yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah, bad day to be a beer. Bad day to be a beer in this operation. <laughs> But uh, we're going to kind of just do it how we envisioned it. And chop it up. And chop it up. Yeah. And just going to make it work that way. I mean, I don't know how any other way to describe it, but that's no. why yeah, we did this gonna, show. We're just going to go after it. Yeah. Yeah. So what were you saying about your TikTok? It's just been real weird. I've been uh, been getting a lot of poem reading TikToks. Yeah. Found one today that maybe... Ex- you guys don't all know this. Mace and his wife know because we vacation together. But I'm pretty sure I can have like meaningful relationships with animals. Like they understand me more than other people. I always thought. Yeah. And everybody's like, Oh, you're full of shit. No, the owl. Uh, yeah. That owl was out there. We were, I'm like Pocahontas, but yeah, you and Pocahontas are real close, a little wider and not as Indian. Yeah. Native American. Yeah. Unfortunately not. My, my grandma always said that I was, but wait, is your grandma really native American? Grandma, my dad. No, no, no. Grandma smoker. Grandma Smoker. My dad always told me that Grandma Smoker's grandpa was an Indian chief. Oh, oh. with a headdress and everything? <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. And I believed it all the way up until my sister uh, went and got one of those 23 and Me's, and either she's not my sister or somebody's been lying. Well, I guess either way, somebody's probably been lying. Well, let's just... <laughs> To keep the story alive, we'll just say she's not really your sister. Yeah. Unless oh. she watches the show. She then, watches the show. Oh, shit. Hey, you're still in the family. <laughs> yeah. You're still in the family. Old sitting bull. But yeah, apparently I got this little fingerprint uh, structure that is a rarer thing and uh, means I'm more connected with nature. I got it, too. I don't, I don't know how rare it is. That explains that one day I drove by on 161 and I saw you out there barefoot shirt off rolling around your i can't yard. be barefoot anymore that's the thing that yeah. sucks oh you're gonna have to get why don't you get some of those toe shoes <laughs> well because you have to put an insole you, i gotta wear an insole you gotta now. put them fat sausage toes in those things mm-hmm. hmm. so what I wonder if there's like an uh, implant what like an implant what do you mean you know like it seems to me if you can have an insole for support yeah i mean if you could you can change all sorts of other shapes to different parts of the body. So like a, to me, I like you like be a able foot to job, get an arc job, like a foot job, yeah, an arc job or an arch, arch. Job. I yeah. guess, yeah. yeah, yeah. I got high arches, see, and I see, think that's I why my feet hurt. Mine are falling. Fat. Mine's falling on my right. So foot. when's your MRI? Twelfth February. Guess what? Yeah, got to go to Evansville. Oh, you know why? Why? F-ing weight limit. <laughs> can you believe that? <laughs> Well, God dang, you just got to put your foot in there. I know, it's just my foot. That's what I said. It's just a foot, but I I guess it's just a blanket deal. Surely to God, there's some sort of like a veterinarian clinic around here that's got an MRI for horses. I bet we could call up Janelle and see what they got. Yeah. Well, but what's the MRI going to show? What the tumor is. The inside of the foot. What the mass is. Yeah, but... I mean, I'm not, not a doctor. Gonna, I don't. I don't mean. Yeah. I don't. That's just. That's what he wants. I mean, that's what the doctor says. How big that, did he think it was? I don't know. It on the so when he ultrasounded it, it looked like it was the size of, uh, uh, like half of a hard boiled egg. That's pretty good size. Yeah. So how long have you been having the neuropathy? Neuropathy. My foot's been numb for lo- ever, long time, like year. Or more. So there's a possibility this isn't actually affecting anything. No, the pain is what it's being affected by. No, I don't know what you're trying to ask. No, I'm, 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 I'm maybe prepared. the tumor's always been there and it's not a. Well, problem. I don't know. It could be just a fatty tumor. Yeah, that's. I mean, yes, he never said the word cancer at all. Okay, well, you're yeah. you're writing it off, and I don't. 
I'm writing my, your eulogy in my head right now. Oh, and I just fuck. Good <laughs> grief. <laughs> Padre Nuestro que estás en los cielos. I work quickly, my friend. <laughs> no way. <laughs> That's I, bullshit. <laughs> 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 uh, no, I don't I don't know what it is. I just I told him I don't give a or crap what we do. I just want this pain to stop. Hmm. And he's like, well, did you hurt your foot? Did you step in a hole? Did you suffer an injury? And I'm like, no, no. Have you ever been like... Nothing. Pounding a, a hatchet with a hammer and then have the hat, hatchet break off and then your foot bleed or anything right after? No. Okay. No, I don't well, have That's very specific. Dave. I don't have tetanus. I haven't stepped well, on a Well, it's not tetanus. Nail. I had a buddy that cut his foot doing that. Like a shrapnel went in there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I had another buddy that used to be a derby car on a oh. derby car team. Oh, yeah. Oh, on a team. He yeah. wasn't the driver. Wasn't he the was driver. We had crew. Here, yeah. And similar thing. Somebody had a pickaxe or something in the hood, and he was hitting it with a <laughs> sledgehammer. <laughs> and, you know, you can't do that because everything's hardened. Steel and steel. Bad deal. But, so when it splintered, like he remembered getting hit a couple places mm-hmm. and wrote it off. Well, 10 years later, we're working on this machine we were making, and it had these precision like magnets magnetic drives oh god and he went probably about this size and but it was up here so he went to put his hand on it and he you know like it shocked him like what happened he's like i don't know he's like is this thing on i'm like no nothing's on it's a magnetic rod and he put his hand up there and you saw this part of his hand go whoop oh but from that time wow a little piece of shrapnel got in there but that magnet was strong enough that it was trying to pull it out of his hand yeah but it, when the doctor cut it out, took a mighty big hole to cut it out because after 10 years, all this the rust gets encapsulated. Just tissue growing around it. That's what it, happens in some of those boob jobs. That's why you can't go to an actual MRI if you have uh, older metal yeah, parts feelings. and shit. Papa Frank would be out on that. Yeah. Well, you mentioned tetanus. There's somebody in the family tree. Now, which branch it is off of. He died of lockjaw from a rusty fishing hook. Good grief. Wild to think about that. Man, I remember I, being and like, I asked wow. Dad, and I asked Dad, I go, what, what the a way to go. Because I don't know what lockjaw I is. Yeah. You just can't eat. It just, your jaw gets locked it's just, yeah, it's just it's locked like, up. Almost like your jaw's wired shut. It's yeah. like locked up. You just can't hook on you, So Depending least, on what it was, I imagine maybe they didn't have blenders yet. Yeah, it's true. Hey, at least your trip to the podiatrist didn't end up in a walking boot. It would have if I didn't tell him I, I couldn't miss work. Are you serious? As a heart attack. Gosh. Mm-hmm. I don't, I'm so aggravated with He like, wanted me to leave. He wanted me to, he said this, he said, obviously what you got going on is, you know, you, you, we should probably get you in a boot. And I was like, I can't miss work. Because my my MRI is not till the twelfth. Mm, that's long and, time. and the way the way our policy works is is you have to exhaust all of your PTO, all of our PTO first before you can get into FMLA. No, it runs concur- it, it runs <coughs> simultaneously, which makes no sense. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about this off air. Okay, but yes, it is D U M B dumb. But uh, how attached are you to the foot? <laughs> well, and there again, if I was, but here's the thing though. If I'm gonna if but here if I'm gonna take it off, I'm going at the knee. Oh yeah, you don't take the ankle off. Yeah, I'm not gonna leave that bottom. Poor st- little tank stump. Tank. No, I'm Poor going. At the I mean, tank I guess. Tank I mean, the only thing that would keep me from I would go below the I would go below the knee about yay. So I would have that little. How little, many? Yeah, because you'd want to have the pervert jokes. Why? Oh, what? the little yeah, <laughs> little boner <laughs> yeah. machine. Yeah. There. You would. Touch my third leg. Other than the heart commonly leg? called lockjaw is a serious bacterial disease that affects muscles and nerves. I don't understand why how death can result from severe breathing difficulties or heart. Ah, there we go. So it wasn't like an actual lockjaw, just kind of your no, heart. You didn't starve to death. Yeah. That's yeah, just my I, estimation. I didn't think so. I do know when you get tetanus, you got to get these big gnarly, you got to get like a whole shit pot full of uh Shots in your stomach, they say, and like the the needles are pretty dandy, is what well, is what I've big guys said. or regular folks, any guys, anybody that gets you think tetanus. Fellows like us, we need bigger needles than say couch guy. Yeah, you think they make needles for fat guys to get? Through oh all that? yeah, well they duh. have to. Yeah, because they got it. So here's the man. I, I've seen some big mother truckers out there. It'd be like a like a javelin. 
a javelin. What they've done is they've repurposed those lawn dart needles or lawn darts. <laughs> they just that's what they use them for now. Chuck them up in the air. So my trip to the podiatrist, I get this walking boot. Mm-hmm. All I want was an MRI, and he and he gets to it and he's like, "Well, you gotta wear this walking boot. You gotta take this uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory NSAID." There's four weeks of those in there twice I'm, a day. I'm eating uh, three prednisone for seven days. And then the gab depends. And then the, I'm eating those like Skittles. You should be feeling pretty good. Yeah, but pens is not narcotic. All it does uh, is for nerves. And I asked today about. Well, I mean, like the steroid should make you feel pretty good. Well, I mean, yeah. Because prednisone steroid. Yeah, I, and I'm doing a huge taper of that. So three pills. Seven days, two oh. pills, seven days, one pill, seven days. Now's the time for you to get in the gym and hit hard. Yeah. You're really, going to have energy. You're going to be running around the house. Really roid up. Actually, just what makes me want to eat. Oh, really? Yeah, that's mm. a that's a common thing for pregnant. That's a tough spot. Yeah. Because you don't need to, we don't need to do any more of that. No. Um, by the way, that's um, taking some kind of big heat about your uh, nap reel that's hit Facebook. <laughs> Yeah, I showed that to uh, the warden, and she was like, what the fuck? Shots fired, huh? And I was like, yeah, but did you see who the first guy that commented was? Some life coach and fitness guy down in Florida. He called you out by name. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, I don't think it's working, Justine. Maybe you should uh, hit that guy up. Well, Papa Frank. Good said, looking feller. Papa Frank said something about it. He goes, and he's not on Facebook, so he was like, uh, what's, uh, what's the deal with Mace and his naps? And I go, I don't know. I guess he takes pretty serious naps. He goes, well, if you're burrowing down in the covers with the old CPAP, I'd say it is pretty serious. Nap. <laughs> yeah, we all been there. You no, no so nap. I think I might have overstayed. I, I might have over exaggerated the length. You can't back nap. up. You no, can't no, 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 no. Sometimes, sometimes, like when I'm really smoked, and you know what? It's worser in the winter time, or excuse me, it's worser in the summertime. Because when you like, if you're out and it's balls hot all day, and you're just gutted. And you don't have anything going on, and I will come home and sit in the air conditioning, like shower off and everything like that. Getting sit in the air conditioning, I yeah. could, I could. It's just game over. Can you? What's your game plan? Do you shower before you sit, or do you sit for a while and then shower? Oh no, I sit for a while then. Yeah, I got to stop sweating before I can shower because nothing pisses me off more than like having to shower sweaty, like. I don't know, church or something. You're like, well, I got to go get in the shower because I've been outside doing whatever. And right. then you get out of the shower and you're like still sweating when you're out of the shower. Oh, that's awful. That's well, still, that is the worst thing. When you get out of the shower and you're still, it's a tough spot. Well, because we don't have central air. Right. At the moment. That's a bigger tough spot. Yeah. And so like we do a lot of sweating. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's about a cool 81, 83 in the living room sometimes. And <sighs> that's pretty rough. Which, you know, these old CGI fire stoves. I was talking to old uh, friend of the show, Cody, a block over. Yeah. And he's got the instruction manual for his. Oh, really? And it instructed in there that in the summertime, you can put block ice in it and run the fan and it cools. Where does the water go when it melts? Well, I imagine it just pools up in there, and you got to take care of that. But I thought that was pretty neat. Somebody thinking ahead that far. Well, what the hell? You just shut the damper off to keep the warmer air from coming in, huh? And then just then turn the fan on manual, and it just blows air across the cold box. Does yours have a manual fan switch? Not a damn. Yeah. Interesting. We should be harvesting ice as we speak. Well, I got a lot of meat to put in the freezers. I don't know if I have room to store it. Uh, I've been hearing some ads. Speaking of ice, I've been hearing some ads for some polar plunges. Yeah, there's one coming up uh, at the at the forest. Yeah, and there was one in Petersburg. That's what I was going to ask. I don't know if I could do it or not. You don't think so? Oh, I could do it. I just not for. You're a big old bitch. You can't do it. My shins (laughs) snap. They freeze up and shatter. You're like, what happened to <laughs> his legs? So, well, he did a nice plunge, and his goddamn legs just splintered so, right off. I feel like I got shins. chicken bones in the <laughs> Chicken <Yeah>. bones. <laughs> Bird bones, they're hollow. Oh, man. Yeah, no, they're... <clears throat> I get worried to jump off things anymore because of my girth. You don't jump off. <laughs> this polar plunge, like the one in No, Ferdinand no, I'm Forest. just in general. Like, I don't even oh. like to skip. I think oh, the no. rule for the Ferdinand Forest, you like you got to walk in. You and run walk in like out. Baywatch. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, Baywatch. big fan of the show, Ricky Clem. Oh, I thought you were getting ready to say big fan of Baywatch. No, well, yeah, me too. David Hasselhoff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that. I don't think my that's right wife, going. Pamela. <laughs> no, but uh, Clem's done it every year because in the beginning it was started for and by the um, Special Olympics. No, Fishers, Jay Fisher, um, his little little. Uh, son Paul that oh. uh, tragically passed away. Gotcha. So they okay. did that to raise funds for him, however many years ago, and it's been going on ever since. Well, and sometimes I think-, I think one or two times that it's been froze, and they've had to like cut a hole in the yeah. ice to get in there. Well, I suppose we could polar plunge in Holland if we had a fitting. Up. Well, there's no swimming in the Holland Lake. It's not swimming; it's plunging. Well, there's no plunging. In they Holland. wouldn't let you do it. No, I bet they would. Highly illegal. Uh, we could uh, we could do it at my house. Yeah, we yeah. could build a slip and slide. Oh. That's a terrible idea. Why? When you slide in on your ass and that cold hits you, right on. Then the you taint. go into shock. Taint first, ah. and then you're stuck under the water. Hey, if you got hemorrhoids though, oh, that would work. That would be a that'd be a bolt of lightning in there <laughs> or prostate issues. <laughs> Nitrogen injection yeah. right in your old that's, asshole. That's what it would be. Uh, yeah, I I don't know. I'm I'm probably going to be out. Which brings me to my next question. There's a lot of people that I know, uh, like in my inner circle, that are doing these ice things. Ice baths? Yeah. Oh, Clyde is a big ice bather. Is that right? Well, but you so, said Clyde's in shape. Oh yeah, Clyde's a. Pillar of health. Doesn't he he's do jujitsu and shit like that? No, too? no, no. He's a wrestling coach over there. At oh, Gasper. that's right. Does he live by the old town hall? Mm-mm. No, he lives over that's there Alex. on the north side oh, okay. of the. He is the head varsity coach. Though. Okay, the guy by old town hall. Yeah, that's what I thought. Clyde lives uh, over there north of the old uh, fairgrounds. There, north of the old fair Malters, the, the fairgrounds. Yeah. Oh, okay. Maltersville. Yeah. Right on the other side there. Yeah. Yeah, on our side. Is he a fan of the show? Yeah. He he rocks a sticker on the truck. Yeah. Hell yeah. Uh, awesome. But no, I, I know of uh one, two Are you really writing that three, down as you can? I'm just making tallies <laughs> here. I th- I think I know of three people that do it like on the rig. Yeah, he does. it's supposed to be really good for inflammation and uh, muscle. Uh, uh, one guy told me that if he does it for three minutes, it, it, he, it feels like he's done a whole eight ball of Coke all day. Like it just makes him feel alive. How does he know like, what doing a whole eight ball of Coke is? Well, like? allegedly. He, Le- go- oh, he Googled okay. allegedly. And, he Googled uh, it? Yeah, and looked at the symptoms and side effects of uh, cocaine and then yeah. compared that. Uh, I don't think the, there are uh, any. To the uh, ice bath things and it's yeah, lots of endorphins uh yeah a big uh, dopamine dump i knew a guy that dabbled in the cocaine oh yeah i know he several. said it's a hell of a drug yeah it's a rich man's drug because it don't last long yeah. and you got to do a bunch of it i guess why jelly roll sold cocaine because people hey, he's on come. a big redemption tour yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he got his i seen him getting his haircut in a prison the other day yeah he talks about what do you know you're a big jelly roll fan what's his felony conviction for armed robbery was it oh, really? Shit. What was the? Didn't he was just in, <laughs> wow. God damn. Wasn't it just? Uh, if you're gonna go, go big. Wasn't it just the other day he was in the? And uh, was that a Senate meeting? Uh, yeah, about fentanyl. Yeah, he was talking about fentanyl, about how like it's just a, it's a big, it's a scheme. It's and I, which there again, we don't dabble in politics, but this is just a a nonpartisan statement. Like fentanyl, why why is it here? Like why do we? comes from china i understand that but like it's it's being funded and you know it's getting here and i yeah tough spot well i think the the biggest thing of it is there is you know a medicinal purpose for it but it's you know it's made its way into the the drug use because it's it's cheap it must be cheap it has to be cheap and there must be an abundance of it because it seems to come I think it's extremely potent. Well, I think that they uh, when we when I think it was right. So I've been I'm actually getting ready to let my getting ready to let my first responder cert lapse because I'm not gonna I can't why not I can't keep my uh, training hours up. I'm yeah it's my fault. But anyway, when we when I was going through that in like 2000 and 
God, 2006, seven, eight, 2008, when I first became a first responder. And then about five years after that, I reckon it was whenever they started talking about the, they called it gray death. Oh, because they said that like, if you, it was so strong and so prevalent that if you got it on your fingers or if you just touched it, yeah, it would, you, it could get you. Yeah. That makes Cause sense. Cause it was so, so strong. Well, and I think the, the power of a testimony of a guy like that. And here's what I hope so many times in this Hollywood superstar, not Hollywood. I mean, I wouldn't say jelly rolls Hollywood, but in that entertainment business, there's a lot of these guys that are just full of shit. But I really feel like you can tell that Jelly Roll might be legit to the extent of he's got friends on like all right, like Craig Morgan, when they, you know, he kind of got big with that whole when they're at the Opry mm-hmm. and they did all that stuff like almost home. Craig Morgan doesn't seem like a Jelly Roll guy. Right. But he but he is. And then like Laney Wilson and there's other people that aren't. Maybe in that God damn, she's rap. got a dump truck ass. Not her, anymore she? since she lost all that weight. Oh, I ain't seen her late recently. Oh, she's dropped like 75 pounds. Like, Whoa. good for her. Hey, yeah. we're, a, we're a big health first podcast. Yeah. How does she do that while on tour and doing all that? Working out and eating carrot sticks. I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, what wow. was that one asshole's she mu- comment? She must have looked at one of us naked or something <laughs> and decided she was not going <laughs> to eat again. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? Like, you're a big Jelly Roll fan. You've yeah, known about sure. him for a long time, but... I, I like that he's taken his story and utilized it for something good. I just hope that it's legitimate. But his 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 testimony in front of that uh, committee hearing was was good. I mean, it was he basically said, you know, I've buried a lot of friends because of this shit, and I guess his the mother of his child is a drug abuser, you know, and it. I think she's been clean for a couple of years, but yeah, it's a bad spot. That's why he ended up getting custody of his daughter. Yeah. Aggravated so, robbery. There was a gun, though. Yeah. He used a gun to steal weed and was charged as an adult. Yeah. He was 16. Oh, yeah, He was shit. a little fella. Yeah, he went into it. Uh, I bet he wasn't little. No. I'd say he's been big all of his life. Yeah. So where was he? Where's that the fire burning? No. The pilot light is, though. Okay. You cold? No. Do Jelly Roll says he's not a political guy. No, propane. Do you want me to turn it up? My right to vote was taken from me when I was 16 years old as a result of a felony conviction mm-hmm. for aggravated robbery. Well, it depends on what state you're in. Tennessee, he can never get it back. In Tennessee? You know, you, apparently, once he's on that list, he'll never be able to vote. But in see, like, Tennessee. But in the state of Indiana, you can have a felony conviction, but you cannot be like in jail or prison right. with that conviction to yeah. get out and vote. I believe that's the case. Yeah, he went into that a little bit at the concert, did talking he? about it. Oh, yeah. Where did you see him at? Evansville. That's right. He's going to be at the, uh, in Milwaukee. Harley's doing a big homecoming party in July. Road trip. It's uh, Jelly Roll and Hardy and another one. Hmm. Chili Peppers, maybe? The Red Hot Chili Peppers? Yeah. Oh, that's nutty. That would be, that'd be fire up the Googler to figure that out. How about uh, Bourbon and Beyond's concert list that oh, they dropped? We got uh, plans that weekend, or we would be there. We do have plans. Barbecue comes. Oh, the yeah. Wandering Dutchman, the second annual. Second annual. Yeah. Wandering Dutchman barbecue competition. Hey, you think our buddies at Overboard are going to make the uh, list to play there at Holland Fest? Oh, that'd be cool. If not, what if we just got them to play like a private show? <laughs> Over in the... <laughs> That'd be sweet. I bet they do. Uh, shit, I Guaranteed know they would. It. They had that. They had that bandwagon. They call it. Yeah, that, that black truck. Could you imagine we rolled that in? Let them guys jam. Because what time does the, the beer garden close down? It was like midnight. 10, 11 o'clock. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just let them fire up. At midnight. Yeah, right there at eleven. Just oh, let them rip. God, we have to do that on Saturday night, like after the comp's over. Red Hot Chili Peppers, Jelly Roll, Hardy, The Offspring, Warren Zeters, Cypress Hill, and many more are going to be there at that. Willie G. Davidson homecoming party. Warren Zeters. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good lineup. I asked Jenna if she'd want to hop on the Harley and ride to Wisconsin, but she didn't seem too excited about it. That'd be a hell of a haul, though, right? Seven and a half hour drive. Yeah, because so you got to get be north a, of Chicago. Chicago would be a mess to get through. Well, so I'd, it'd probably be like a 14 hour drive because I'd probably go way around Chicago and just enjoy. Like over to Rockford? So just enjoy something more scenic. Where the peaches are? 
Where the that's Georgia. Rockford peaches. I know. I was joking. Yeah. Hey, speaking of Rockford peaches, did you see that uh, the Bombers are doing that? Uh, oh yeah, the past uh, players. Yeah, thing? they're doing a like a MLB thing. Now, who here's, do you think is going to show up? Here's the thing. Like he talked about, or he somebody on their social media team posted <laughs> that it was a player involved in the Bartman situation. Well, hell, that could be anybody. The hell's a Bartman situation? Well, the Cubs, Steve Bartman, back in the 03 NCAA, uh, National League Championship Series, NLCS. He kind of... Hey, give me your pen and paper real quick. Yeah. He kind of came over the side railing and Moises oh, Alou yeah. went up in it. <laughs> That's, That's right. Steve Bartman. Yes. So if you're talking about having Moises Alou there, that's cool. Just don't shake his hand because he used to pee on his hand. Uh, he used to pee on his hand to keep blisters off. Blisters. Blisters. Blisters off. So it'll be interesting to see. They've uh, they've kind of announced some players there that they got coming in. Our buddy Travis Lamar just down the road, I think he's managing the squad. Oh, really? Yeah. Should be a good... Uh, yeah, Steve Bartman. You remember him. They made like a whole Netflix documentary and everything about him. All kinds of stuff. He leaned over the wall, caught the ball in, 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 in the NLCS. And then he sat there with his headphones on? Yeah, like... Uh, old school. That tells it was you how a, far it was. Like a Halloween costume. That they, there were Halloween costumes. People dressed up as Steve Bartman because he had a, he had like a yeah. This guy. He had the Walkman headphones on and shit. Yeah. <laughs> so he was a player. Negative. No, he was, he was a, a fan. fan. Oh. Leaned over the wall and caught yeah. a ball. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, yeah. And they didn't call fan interference, but they didn't have. I mean, twenty years ago, you didn't have the replay stuff that you have sure. now. Which is kind of wild. So on my track to go ahead, what are you thinking? No, they were saying that, uh, like in, uh, why would a fan have blisters on it? Like oh, Moses Alou. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, Moses Alou. I was just that's a lot weirder if it's just somebody that like she needed that medicine from that lady <laughs> you shared at airplane with. Maybe working in the mail room at Macy's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pissing on his hand. I didn't want to get blisters. <laughs> yeah. They um, <laughs> that's a wild scene, <laughs> but it's hard to think. I mean, we're into February, and you know that's not. When's Groundhog's Day? Friday. This Friday? Yeah. The second. The second. Hmm. You big groundhog? Are you a big? Are you a fan of Bill Murray's cult classic Groundhog's Day? I don't know. Bold statement. I'm not sure if I've seen it all the way. Yeah, through. me neither. I. I think I've seen it all the way through in pieces, but I don't know if I've ever sat down and watched it in its entirety in one sitting. Which, by the way, did you see a comment about, oh, no, another movie review by... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's old, old Brother Frick down the road. Yeah, yeah. well... And then the one guy said uh, something about whatever, and then he's like, yeah, you probably watched Jungle. Oh, speaking of Jungle, so posting shorts... The one jungle short had six views. <laughs> it was like <laughs> nice. Two and a half thousand, two point six thousand, six is what that looked like. It's a good view. I mean it's a good it was an awesome review. Great. Yeah, great review. I'm sure what's uh what what's Harry Potter's real name? Daniel, Daniel Radcliffe. Radcliffe. I'm sure if he would have heard that, he uh would be impressed by your fandom. Yeah. So Groundhog's Day, why do we even care about it that much? Does anybody know any historical significance of it? No, but have you seen what PETA has said recently about yeah, it? Or oh, Jesus. Exploiting the possum, not the possum, the groundhog. Mm -hmm. It's uh, Groundhogs are naturally shy, sensitive prey animals who react poorly when handled in front of a rock, ruckus crowd. I think Poxitani Phil does okay with people. Poxitani Phil, the groundhog, used for Groundhog's Day celebrations in Pennsylvania. Why? Turn it to one, turn it up to two or something. It'll go. Hell no! Just let her fill up. We'll light this candle. Yeah, that's how we'll get rid of the bugs. I don't know. I just uh, hell I'm, with those mice. I'm not <laughs> and this shop. I uh, I'm not. Uh, I don't know. Groundhog's Day, Schmoundhog's Day. I don't. I don't. Somebody at work today said it's actually the halfway point between the winter solstice. And the spring solstice, if that makes sense. 
I didn't know there was a spring solstice. I thought there was just a winter and a summer solstice. Studies have found no consistent association between a groundhog seeing its shadow oh, and the subsequent yeah. arrival time of spring. Yeah, weather. exactly. It's just, <laughs> it's for shits and giggles. It's an old tradition for you sure. continue to do. I don't know if I could go, though. I don't have a top hat. Oh, uh, we'd have to get you one. Don't you have to wear, you have to wear a top hat, don't and you? And tails. Huh? Tails. Oh, your suit yeah. jacket with tails. Where is Foxatani? Punxatani. Punxatani. Well, it's uh, Pennsylvania. That... Oh, okay. I thought it was New York. I was thinking New York. No, it's in Pennsylvania. Puxatani. Probably right Phil, outside of that dump called Philadelphia. What's Couch Guy waving at? He's thumbs down. Thumbs down. He's yeah. not a fan of Philadelphia. No shadows would appear in yeah Punxatani, Pennsylvania, at seven a.m. So Fox. what's seven a.m. Yeah. So do they reach in there and pull the groundhog out of the hole? I've never actually no, watched it happen. No, he comes out of the damn hole. And I bet he, they shock him. If he comes out and stays out, then it's... Uh, six weeks till six spring. Six weeks till spring. If he comes out and then turns around and go back in, we're in for more shitty weather. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it's six more weeks of winter if he goes in and like a month until spring if he stays out. No. It's six weeks until spring. Yeah. It's the same. You're fixing yeah, to say it's, the same, it's the same thing. Yeah, same thing there, yeah. Hmm. Uh, how about that's a that? conundrum. Maybe that's it the whole time. It yeah. doesn't matter if he goes in or out. It's still six weeks. Well, hey, you know who's got a February birthday? My mom. Oh, yeah. Mrs. Yeah. And you. Yeah. I'm a boy. Nice. The big 3-7. Uh, Janelle wild. will be... Uh, can you say your wife's age? When no. It okay. It's... No, you can't. Not anymore. We're not quite to the big celebration yet. No. Like not like Dave's celebration, which I'm kind of speaking overboard. Intrigued to see what the old Dave celebration is going to look like. I don't know if I, I can handle. Somebody it. better take a video because I'm not going to remember it. Oh god, uh, <laughs> that's always good to throw out there on the airwaves. Muchos biros, muy borracho. Yeah, what, what does that, that mean? mean? Very drunk. Oh, February second. According to tradition, the groundhog emerges. If it sees its shadow, it returns to its burrow for six weeks, as a sunny day indicates a late spring, while a cloudy day would mean an early spring. So if it's sunny and he sees his shadow, he goes in. He goes there. in. Six weeks until spring. Yes. So if he stays out, how many weeks till spring? It just says... It indicates an early spring. <laughs> Five weeks, six days. Yeah. <laughs> this been this a whole racket, thing's this a whole goddamn time. sham the whole time. <laughs> I mean, it's got to be a tourist trap. I mean, right? Like, yeah. According to Bill Murray's movie, it's quite the the hubbub they put on over yeah. there. So, what's Peter's big problem with it? Uh, torturing the yeah the the groundhog, the yeah. gopher. Is a groundhog and a groundhog and a gopher the same thing? No, different. One's in Caddyshack, the other one's in Groundhogs. Oh, Groundhogs gopher, <laughs> both Bill Murray movies. <laughs> Starting huh. to see a theme there. But a gopher's smaller tradition. Gophers are much smaller than yeah. a groundhog. Is that a only, mole weighing between? No, two mole's and a little blind pounds. rat looking thing. Mm -hmm. Groundhogs can get big. Twenty pounders, probably. Chubby old groundhog. Yeah, munching on clover. Dixie land of light. Yeah, gophers are little fellers. Like on the movie uh, Old Brother, Where Art Thou? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Gopher ever? Care for some gopher ever? Well, no, sir. I'm afraid a third of a gopher would only tease my appetite without uh, peasing it, maybe? I'm not sure what the actual what movie is that from. Old Brother, Where Art Thou? Yeah. Never seen it. What? Damn, we're in a tight spot. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a hillbilly rendition of the Odyssey. Yeah. Oh, like the actual Odyssey. like Homer's Odyssey. Mm -hmm. It's really good. What do you think about though, like Homer and Socrates and Pluto and all those Greek philosophers? Big fan. You think they're just really full of shit? Like I'm reading, uh, slowly reading, but I've got a. Uh, is it Marcus Aurelius? Moby Dick. Um. <laughs> what <laughs> meditations there it is yeah oh so i'm reading through that dude 
So the movie the left o- the uh the holdovers? Have you seen that? I think it's on Prime or Hulu. It's uh I think I talked didn't I tell you about it? I watched it the other night. The holdovers. I think it is. The holdovers. It's about a a show, yeah, 2023 movie. And it's got uh God bless America. Paul Giamatti. He plays a teacher. Mm, Paul Giamatti. Yeah, plays a teacher in uh set in, like in the 70s in like upstate New York, and it's like a boarding school. Mm. And these kids go on holiday, like for Christmas break. Yeah. And the kids that don't get to go home for Christmas break have to stay there. They're called the holdovers. And it's just about Giamatti gets screwed and has to be the teacher on duty, and he's just an old whiskey drinking crotchety old bastard yeah 100 percent. he's a like a, a, a like a greek history teacher and he ta- he's there's all sorts of uh um uh, tiebacks to like socrates and like all oh, you guys are talking uh. about. but he gives the kid that so there's like five kids that are held overs yeah one of them being like this super rich kid that his dad's got a helicopter so he's he, That's pretty cool. He shows up like four days into break with the helicopter and says, hey, we're going up to somewhere skiing. You want to come? So they call all the kids as parents. They got a hold of everybody but one kid. So they all went skiing, and he stayed with Giamatti. And it, it just – they he gave that kid the, the meditations book. Mm. Yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. That is pretty I mean, cool. it's – uncanny that you're yeah, actually yeah, reading yeah. the same damn book yeah yeah well, it was old book old book so is it like why are you reading it i don't know it's just on amazon prime and <sighs> it's weird to read into those and then there's insight this from that i don't know when that book was written when was marcus aurelius kicking uh a long time ago was meditations man you guys are both googler machines right now uh yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, so it's old as shit. Uh, <laughs> 161 to 180. Somewhere in there. 161 to 180. B- BC. AD. Oh, sorry, AD, yeah. But you read through it and it's like, oh. Stuff that still holds true today. Yeah. Maybe not like to the T, but if you read it for the gist and not for the, you know what I mean? Like read between the lines. A little bit. It's neat to see something. So who was this Marcus Aurelius feller? Well, he was a Roman emperor. I was going to say, he's Roman. Oh, yeah, he is a Roman emperor. I'll be damned. He probably he, was, he lived from 121 to 180 AD. So yeah, I believe this was probably... That's a long-ass time ago. After he died. So would you think that right now it's 2023 AD? I, I wouldn't think that. It's 2024 AD. 2024 AD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why do we not say AD anymore? Because it's implied. Because yeah. we're living in the time and knowing it is. Yeah. Now, in the future, in 2,000 years, no, no. I guess it depends what? on how far did we go BC. It would depend on that because BC goes backwards. And if we passed whatever the farthest back written time is, so maybe it was like 900 BC, there's only going to be one 900 and it's 80 because there can't be both. Oh. You know what I mean? Uh, no. So I would say, uh, furthest, oldest recorded history. 4,500. Okay. So in a 1,000 years, it'll be 2024 AD because it could potentially be BC as long as we don't lose that history between now and, now and then. But once we get to the year 4,500 AD, anything beyond that, there's only one option to be AD because we didn't have written recorded history. In prior five oh one pr- BC. Got it. So No, it'd be four forty nine. No. Wouldn't it be what is one number less than four or five? Bigger. It, go, it gets bigger the farther you go back. Because no. you got when Christ was born, one year before Christ was born, two years before Christ was born, three years before Christ. You know, keeps on going. It said there. the earliest known civilization arises in summer of forty five. Hundred to four thousand BC. Earliest recorded date in Egyptian calendar was forty two forty one BC. The first year of the Jewish calendar was actually thirty seven sixty BC. 
That's a long time ago. Wow. That's a mind, uh, mind wandering. Oh, yeah, because it would obviously get <clears throat> yeah. nutty. Um, I saw something the other day that would disappointed me. Okay. There's some things that shouldn't be redone in Hollywood. Oh, no. They're redoing, or they're doing an update of It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you think it'll be black and white? Uh, N- no. This update is going to be uh, more in tune with the times. So That's trouble. Well, because there was another classic that they were going to murder by giving it the big Hollywood update. I couldn't, I think I just, the problem, me. I guess though, here's the deal. Hollywood can't have any more original thoughts. No. Or nothing sacred anymore. Well. Nobody goes to the movies because they don't like these pretentious pricks that make millions of dollars and jet set. That's what I was driving at. Okay. Is. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> Maybe somebody that is our children, your grandchildren's generation will not have any desire at all, no matter how much Grandpa says to watch it, to watch a black and white movie from whatever year. So maybe by giving it a recent update, it might actually, the story could reach more people in a meaningful way than it would if it was just left to die. Now, will it be anything good to you? No, absolutely not. But if they don't dick with the with the message, maybe it's a good thing. Hmm. Yeah, I got something for you. I'm not looking forward to it. What's that? Garlic? Oh. Keeping the old vampires away? He's taking that for his heart. uh, I've been on the train. How does it feel? It's spicy. I've never had raw garlic. You want to do it? Sure. Are you kidding me? Have you ever had raw garlic? Yeah. You have? Yeah. It's going to make a mess. I'm part Italian. It's all right. The housekeeper out here at Smoker's Lounge will get it. Oh, there's some. Yeah, what do we call that mouse? I, Bojangles. Yeah. Bojangles. I don't know if Bojangles eats mice. He'll have some stinky breath. You eat that whole clove there? Yeah. That whole big bastard? Yes, sir. Oh, God. Oh, I thought you broke it down a little bit. Well, you can. It says on the internet you're supposed to eat one to two whole cloves a day. Really? Yeah. And the first time I did... Can you eat it in spaghetti? No, because it's cooked. Oh, and when it's cooked, it loses its luster, its actual medicinal uh, properties. Now, you don't piss on your hands to keep blisters away, do you? No, sir, huh? Okay. Now, so how many you, days straight have you done this? About a week. Yeah, that's a clove there. Okay, I thought that whole big thing was the clove. No, it breaks off into little spheres. The medicinal properties on this stuff is amazing, though. Mm, like dandelion root. root. Yeah, see, there's a one. That's a clove? Yeah. That looks more manageable. You going to pop that in and chew her down the hatch? Is, is it pretty spicy? Like, oh, yeah. Is it going to make me like... It's spicy. Like, should I wait till break? No. <laughs> you want one? No. I take my garlic in pill form. Do you really? No. You chewing it up? Are you not supposed to? Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah, you are. Now, if you watch uh, Cowboy Kent Rollins, shout out Cowboy Kent. <laughs> he deals a lot, a lot well, with... What do you uh, think? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, I didn't realize it was that spicy, but... Well, yeah. look at this. Look at his forehead glisten. It's been glistening since we started. Yeah, <laughs> it has. But no, I... So a friend of mine, that's also the... So that's uh, good for my ticker? Yes. Very good. Really? Yes. Any oxidants? No. no. I mean, it may be, but... Uh, so the, the guy, a friend of mine that does the... Uh, oh, the damn ice bath stuff. Mm-hmm. He is a huge garlic guy. And he was like, dude, you got to you gotta eat garlic. And I was like, what for? And he said, well, it is awesome for your immune system. It is, makes you almost, it says, excellent health promoting and disease preventing effects on any human common diseases, such as cancer, cardio, cardiovascular, and metabolic disorders, it could be used for blood pressure and diabetes through its antioxidant and anti-inflammatory and anti-lipid or in lipid lowering properties. Garlic is a great benefit to the human body. When you say the whole garlic, it's like a buck a piece. 
Dollar fifty nine per clove, and you get like per clove or per garlic per head, per bulb. Okay, and then you can get you know what, several, twenty out of there, several out. But what I do is, is I'll break it, I'll cut it into like three, and just take it like a pill. Well, it's, couldn't you swallow that? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I mean you could, but it's not comfortable. No. Oh. Yeah, I feel like you gotta spend a lot of nights working truck stop parking lots to be able to take that down in one. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, that's all I got. So why don't you chew it? Well, I do. I can, but it's it makes your breath stink. Mm. For, you, for, the for, missus, quite, for quite some time. The missus ain't laying And you'll belch it and mm. fart it. And then when you work hard and you sweat, sweat it. you'll sweat it. So, so hey. how long are the clothes good for? Like, can I bust them into little pieces and put them in a Ziploc or what? I mean, I guess you could. I don't know. Maybe I'll try garlic for a while. Yeah, yeah, see if it works out. Good for your blood pressure. See, like this one's, it's jam-packed with them, with the cloves. Huh. Yeah, there's so, some over there when it went flying. So is this something you're going to stay on? I mean, I don't know. Maybe. If I see... Uh, Beneficial. If I see, like, awesome effects of it. What about the cold bath? You going to get in that? Uh, there's not a trough big enough for me. <laughs> oh, I go, disagree. We'll go the King, problem you is, is getting the damn things. Uh, they say the cold. optimal temperature for like those cold plunge is really only like 50 degrees. Yeah, it doesn't have to be much. No, to promote circulation. I think that's I think what it's Clyde like. tries to get his down to like 30. Well, you can't because it freezes at 32. Mm, I think you can. <laughs> I think it starts getting frothy. Now, how does that work? Maybe it's 32 or 5, but I think he tries to get, because you want it to be lower than the temperature you're shooting for your core body. So the friends, the friend of mine that did his, he, he said that like his is at 54 degrees because he keeps it in his garage and it stays around 50. But if you think about it, water that comes out of the tap 54. is like 56 because yeah, that's, that's the temperature, the ambient temperature of the ground. Well, so they, uh, um, I don't know where I saw it, but they were talking she about just got home. Mm -hmm. uh, they were talking about um, like swimmers that yeah. the metabolic effect because that water is cooler mm -hmm. and you're in, you know you're surrounded by that water, so you're doing the physical activity plus in that cold water that that's why swimming is such a good exercise for oh, it's you. it's a it's a total body deal. There. Barn burner. Right. Hey, let's get into three big things for this week. Okay. <laughs> Our buddy Brad Ohanian. Good. In and out has never closed a location until now, Dave. Oh boy. The burger chain regretfully announced for the first time that it will close one of its California restaurants due to safety concerns. Safety concerns. Yeah. yeah Brado asked if have any of us ever eaten at an in and out? He has not. He's just curious as well to where they're located, like regionally. I think it's a West Coast thing, right? Yeah, mostly. Yeah, I've not been to one, but I'd say this, they're calling it safety. But didn't they just make the minimum wage out there like twenty four dollars an hour? Oh, it's something out in California. In California. Something about fast food restaurants and wages went insane like a month and a half ago. I don't know. I don't know either. That's in, that is insane. Uh, announcing that its Oakland location will soon shutter because of rampant crime oh. in the California city. The location has been open for nearly two decades and will close on March 24th. Here's the crime statistics in Oakland. Burglaries are up 23%. Motor vehicle thefts are up 44% compared to the year prior. In the 75-year history, the Oakland closure is the first that it's ever done. We feel the frequency and the severity of the crimes being encountered by our customers and associates leaves us no alternative. The Oakland location was busy and profitable, but it can't ask its customers or employees to visit or work in an unsafe environment. So December 21st, uh, this particular article was written, um, but in April of 2024 in California, beginning in April, fast food workers will have a minimum wage of $20 per hour. Yeah. So I think you're going to see a whole lot of restaurants closing. Well, but I mean, how can you... That's just... You can't maintain. That's just wild. There's mm -hmm. no way. You're going to have three people working in a fast food restaurant. I've never eaten... eaten I've never eaten at a... Uh, at a 
In and out. I've had a. I've eaten at Whataburger. I'm not eating there. But yet. I've never had. I've never had that. I mean, if you think about the minimum wage, and because you know, it's to keep anybody there worth their salt, you're going to have to do something for them to compensate them for their seniority, <laughs> which is going to be pay or some other sort of benefit. But I mean, how many people typically work in there? You got a manager, you got a fry cook, you got somebody it said at the cashier. They had, it said they had a hundred people that worked at that store. Well, no what? wonder they're closing. Hundred people. Yeah, twenty oh bucks an hour God. for minimum wage. I mean, that's putting you. Yeah, that's a lot. I'd blame it on safety too. But. Price, price is right host reveals secrets to winning the game. Want to win on the Price is Right? Watch this short video to learn some common strategies from the show's host Drew Carey. Brad O's right. We're obviously not going to watch the video. Yeah. What's your favorite Price is Right game? Plinko. I was going to say that, but when I was a kid, I liked the little yodel and mountain climber. That's what I was going to say. The little climber guy until he falls off the yeah. edge. How about, a, how about that kind of gig? <laughs> Drew Carey, who had the Drew Carey show, had uh, Whose Line Is It Anyways, right? Did we talk about him on the show? He was in the military. I don't know. I don't know if we talked about him or not. Yeah, he was like a stud back in the day. But, I mean, to be kicking it with Price is Right, you work six months a year. You film a lot during the oh, day. Oh, it's more than six months a year. They're year round. No, they work in batches. They'll re- huh? Yeah, they'll record. The show comes on every day. Yeah, they record five episodes a day. Really? Yes. I didn't know that. Yeah, they record. So there was a girl that went to UE that made it onto the show and actually made it onto <clears throat> on stage. I think. But they, they do like a casting in between, and then they just reset it, flip the stage. Did we talk about middle fingers last week? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, return of bullfighting met by protest in Mexico City. Animal rights activists recently took to the streets of Mexico City to protest the return of bullfighting to they the capital. They blocked the road. After almost two years. Which one of the Dutchmen would make the best matador? Not me. I'd give it a go. I'm slower than pond water. Your bitch shins would be a problem. They don't go for your shins. I don't know, though. Have you ever you seen matadors? They're usually skinny in the bottom and pretty stout I think it's up just their top. jacket. Oh. I think it is. Hmm. I don't know. I Bullfighting, like, when you watch it, <laughs> I just hate watching. They kill the bull. Yeah, I don't know if I'd want to be just stabbing a bull out there around in front of a bunch of people. They yeah. kill the bull. Like, have you seen them? Yeah. Where they stick the... The spear, the, the spear, well, more or less, get in their back. It. Well, because they keep mm-hmm. they blood loss. They don't actually try to stab it. No, they stick them in their back. Yeah, and then as they bleed, they get weaker, and yeah. then they get more spears, and then mor- but, muerto at the end of it. On the flip side of it, I mean, I guess. Well, that's still a very. They protest the return of bull bullfighting to the capital after almost two years. So that means they've only been not fighting them for two years, or right? Yeah, because I think they had. Uh, I don't so know why I misinterpreted that, I, I, and it's absolutely what it said, and that's absolutely what I read. But what I heard when I read, or what I thought of when I read bullfighting, was running of the bulls. Oh, that's when I made the comment. What they do? Block the road. <laughs> that's true. It's the running of the bulls. That's in Bull, Brazil. Bullfighting was suspended. The running of the bulls, isn't it? No, it's in Spain. Spain. That's what I'm. Uh, Pom- um, not Pompeii. It, no, it gone. begins with a P. Um. Oh my gosh. Anyways, uh, bullfighting was suspended in 2022 as part of a long-running legal case, but in December, Mexico's Supreme Court ruled that the events could take place once more. Six bulls were fought during Sunday's event, during which the ring was emblazoned with the word "Libertad," freedom in Spanish. Pam Palona. That's what it was. Uh, bullfighting has taken place in Mexico for centuries, but in recent years, opposition has grown. In 2013, Sonora State became the first of Mexico's 32 states to ban bullfighting. And now there's four of them that have. I mean... Ecuador, Spain, Colombia, France, Peru, Portugal, and Venezuela also do bullfighting. It's nuts. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'd go watch a bullfight. I think it's tough. They pack the, I mean, they pack the arena. Right, but it's like, man, like, come on. You've got an advantage here. Well, because they, 
I wonder if they dope them bulls up where they don't even feel it anyways. I'd say they're at least hungry and all jacked up on nerves and kept away. Haven't you ever seen Ferdinand? Yeah, I think it's different. I mean, it's pretty pretty similar. I've never seen it. It's 100% what it's about. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, Hey, let's take a break. Pause for the Cause is sponsored by our friends at Dubois County Tire and Supply. Do you need tires or winter maintenance done on your vehicle? Dubois County Tire and Supply does more than just tires and is there for all your needs. They do oil changes along with checking batteries and coolant protection levels for these winter temperatures. They also do free pickup in Jasper City Limits. Have a roadside situation with a tire on your vehicle? They do roadside services for those emergencies. With springtime approaching, check out their selection of lawn and garden tires for all your mowers, ATVs, and other outdoor equipment. Farmers, be sure to check the tires on your equipment before planting season so you are prepared for planting this year. And Dubois County Tire and Supply has great deals on Mastercraft tires going on right now. With stores located in Jasper, Washington, Vincennes, Bloomington, and Salem, they have you covered. Big or small, Dubois County Tire and Supply services it all. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, Dave was coughing there. We needed that. Hey, and we me in the middle. We are back. A big thank you to our friends, Dubois County Tire and Supply. Get over there and see our buddy Zeth today. Uh, probably friend of the program, Nathan Frick. He will. He listens to the show. He yeah. works over there. That's right. Um, over there on the north side of Jasper. They'll do it all for you. If you have a tire emergency, give them a call. You see their trucks out and about. But they've come picked up my vehicles in the past for a tire change or what have you from yeah. work for me. I'm fortunate to work in Jasper, but yeah, makes it real easy to do when you don't have to do anything but leave the keys in the car. Yeah, that is pretty nice. So that's good. That's good. We appreciate them coming on board like you've done with a lot of our sponsors. Show them the support. Tell them the Dutchman sent you. You know, they'll probably see it when the old sticker's on the back glass. That's right. I think so. Hey, let's get into Hour 2, and Hour 2 is our friends, Catering by Meyer. Hour 2 of our program is proudly sponsored by Catering by Meyer. As we step into the new year of 2024, it's time to face a fresh set of events. Graduation parties, weddings, birthdays, family reunions, wedding anniversaries, and class reunions. The good news is you don't have to juggle the complexities of planning alone. Simplify your life by making just one call to Catering by Meyer. Let them take the reins on crafting a delectable menu that will leave your guests raving. Give Catering by Meyer a call today as they are booking up fast. All right. Big thank you to Catering by Meyer. That's right. Bubba and Jared and all the squad. Yeah, we appreciate them coming on board. We talked about it earlier with old Krigo. OG, baby. But Catering by Meyer has been here with us for the long haul. And now we get back to the more little traditional bit of the show, that I think that BS session was good in our I like it. I, like I think it people are going to yeah. like it. Hopefully they do. And if not, we're just going to keep doing it the yeah. way we want to do it because it's our show. All right, big fella. What do you got? Read the topic. Okay. Topic to Mr. Masoner. Stanley's. What the F the deal? What the F is the deal? It's well, it doesn't, s- it doesn't say that. Well... You got to read between the apostrophes. Oh, okay. What yeah. the F's the deal with the old Stanleys? Are you... Yeah, like the Stanley Cups is what what's, I'm thinking. What's wrong hockey. with them? What's wrong with them, buddy? In the Stanley Cup hockey? No. Stanley does a lot of stuff. What's but, wrong with them? Uh, Stanley Cup That's not a Stanley. Hmm. Same design. Yeah, but it's not a Stanley. Okay. Cut me it's down. Shit. Like Here I am figuring something out on sports. No, no. no yeah, no, no, no. The hockey, you. the hockey is a. Yeah, That's a good pull, you. Dave. I'm getting that. Attaboy. Guys. So this article by Vox. Vox. V O X. Is, it? Yeah. is that it? cursive? Yes. Yeah. What Black and white. With? Yeah. Vox News. It what says it? the with Stanley you Water and Bottle news sources. Is that a shitty news source? I I don't know. Anyways, go ahead. The Stanley water bottle craze. Aren't they all lead covered now or something? It says, according to professional hockey players, the Stanley Cup is the be-all, end-all. Winning the cup is the highest You read this article too, didn't you? Yeah. Oh. According to the internet, the Stanley Cup may be even better. It says, all over U.S. in suburban pockets and college towns, the Stanleys have become. This was like the Christmas for Stanley. Yeah, I remember the pink ones. And yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, 
I, I guess I just don't understand. Seven. So according to this, Stanley parlayed this popularity into an enormous fortune going on from a reported $73 million in revenue in, 20, in 2019 to $750 million in 2023. Because they just, I, w- what did they do? Like they've been around forever. Like yeah. I, I have had, like used to at the mine, or in my when I started working full time in two thousand and six, there was two kinds of Stanleys, green ones. There was a green one that was a made in the USA one, or there was a gray one that was Not made, made made in China. Yeah, and the USA ones. This is God's honest truth, and this is not a stab at our. Uh, the Chinese products because we're not stabbing into those waters, but I could take a, I could take a pot of boiling water and put it in that Stanley, the U S one and, and preheat it, you know, preheat the thermos, dump it out, put a can of hot soup in there. And at lunchtime, the sun bitch would still blister your tongue. The other one, like the more modern one, 10 o'clock and it was cold. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know what happened or what. I mean, obviously. Maybe it's the lead. I don't know. Is it, is that a thing? Is there is I, you, you seem like you. Lead's you, awful dense. Well, I understand that. But like, is was there lead in Stanley's? Oh, I just thought I, I thought in my TikTok scrolling there was something about all these swabs. <laughs> and I thought they were driving at the lead paint. Well, I think they're mostly powder coated. Well, Has that got lead in it? I suppose it could if it. Came well, that. To China. But anyway, I just so that's all I knew. Like when when so when the kids made their Christmas list this past year, they all said like Stanleys, and I looked at Justine. And I'm like, why in the hell do they all want thermoses? Like I've got three or four of them in the damn cabinet right now. <laughs> Old school thermoses. And you know, like, are they going to pack their lunch? Are they wanting to take tomato soup to lunch? Or what? what what's going? Why do they want thermoses? And she goes, "No, you moron! They're the new cups, like the remember the like the Yetis. Like remember when the Yeti? Remember tumbled? when Turvis was? Yes, before the Yetis, I still it was have fifty thousand Turvises yeah. in our cabinet. Like those you have Turvises to, made great cocktails. You know what glasses. I never thought of until right now? You talking about soup? I bet you if you, I never preheated, I never used a thermos for food. I, I know you could. Yeah. I always use it for coffee. Right. Well, there's, you got to have the wide mouth. Okay. But I bet you could put sausage gravy in there. Yeah. You can roll. A, I have seen with my own eyes a Tostino's pizza rolled up and jammed in there with the lid on it. My buddy, uh, my buddy, uh, my uh, my big brother, pork chop. Yeah, he, yeah. he uh, dug a Tostino's party pizza out of one of them some bitches one time for lunch. <laughs> that was a real deal. <laughs> that's a treat. Justine, uh, Justine has a funny story. When she was in school, the warden there, she, uh, I think her mom or dad played a trick on her because she she took her lunch all the time. She was a lunch packer, mm-hmm. and uh, they had she had hot dogs. <laughs> hot dogs in a in a thermos one time that that's was, funny that's a funny story. <clears throat> no i you know i don't it, what may, what it makes you wonder is is how much in these products is it a little bit of luck and the right marketing scheme oh yeah 100 percent. because that's all it is thing is i guess i didn't see a bunch of mark uh, i don't watch anything to see marketing but I imagine marketing isn't like it used to be remember the coca-cola bears yes like that was a big deal, and I don't do those that. anymore. I don't. I I'm not know, sure. But I don't think so. This says that uh, you know, according to um, the Today Show, uh, the morning show there, the Today Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it says yes, uh, Stanley uh, does. Stanley is responding to claims that its products contain lead, clarifying that yes, lead is used in the manufacturing mm-hmm. process, but the product needs to become damaged in order to expose the lead mm-hmm. well but here's it's like lead paint it's not dangerous as long as you're not chewing on it yeah yeah chips well so uh, what else i mean you, what there's all kinds of shit that's got lead in it right yeah but I, now, here's or, the thing that I i'm thinking about chew on lead sinkers if you <laughs> well yeah every split shot i ever had i cinched down well, but teeth. like i just in high school i just chew on them that's weird like you know in place of gum or something that would explain a lot 
yeah, Dave, that's a wild thing. But if you if you talk about something getting scratched or dented, these things do all the time. Oh, I mean, mine does. Well, this Yeti cup doesn't even have a bottom to it anymore. It's all, yeah. I don't know. That's just been, a wild thought. Been beat up. Hey, yeah, we do have some lead in there, but don't worry about it. Yeah. It damage it. <laughs> as long as you just don't dig Keep it dip, pristine yeah, in dip, the package. Dang it. Now, my daughters, they have the, the what's their, I don't even know. They're like... These big ass Yeti cups are what thirty ounce. These are thirty ounce tumblers. Thirty or thirty two. Thirty ounce, I believe. I don't. I bet you that those. I don't know how big the Stanley cups are, but it just doesn't seem like they're that big, and they're real narrow bottomed for for cup holders. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then they got this dumbass straw that's eight feet long that sticks out of the top of it, and they all just like tote them around like them little dogs in purses. You know what they're what them yeah it's so silly it's so silly is this a get off my lawn moment no you? it is not I just don't understand Kinda sounds like it yeah. I just don't understand the the goddamn craze over a cup you like I always never wanted- in a million years would I ever imagine that a ten year old child would ask for a cup for Christmas did you get them them yeah hell yeah they did they got like two or three of them. Like I just now, don't understand why would you, why why do they want a cup? I remember being pretty ready and excited about the the opportunity. I believe it was Burger King way back in the day had these Disney cups. It's like oh, Peter Pan yeah. and everything. I, I like those. Uh, and then Batman Forever had these glass mugs at McDonald's. Yeah. How uh, come they don't do that stuff anymore? Cost too much. Yeah. Mm. Well, just think about how expensive everything is now. That's I mean, I'm if you're getting paid $20 to package the cup at the <laughs> at the end for the end user, I imagine uh, a guy making the cup's got to be making 58.35. No <laughs> oh, shit. I don't know. I mean, I know this is you uh, there's not much input to be had, but like just just on average right here. This is I, I just literally googled Stanley Cup and the first thing that pops up is on Amazon, and this is a Stanley Quencher H2, $35. The next one is a Stanley 40-ounce Quencher H2. It's a pink in color. It's on Walmart.com right now for a one twenty nine eighty. Jesus. $129.80. The next one is a, on Amazon. It's just a, this is a 40-ounce Stanley Quencher H2, $45. I'd say the one on Walmart.com is a reseller that is through Walmart. So it's probably like, you know, Janie C. Riley down there just <laughs> hoarded them all up before Christmas. And, and that could be. That could be. Like Elmo. Remember when they did it with Elmo? Yeah. Oh. Furbies? Yeah. Couch Guy, them, they had a, uh, they took an Elmo over to Iraq with them. Tickle me Elmo. Now, now Maxwell got. The ice flow flip straw tumbler. Oh, it's got the it's got a handle on top. It's got a it's kind of a swingy. Oh yeah, like like a swingy handle unit that that the 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 straw pops up like a like a hydro flow or a, yeah yeah like one, the old igloos. Yeah, one of them units. And it's no, that's uh, what I miss the little two cord igloos. Oh, yeah. the little round things. Yeah, little red white lid. You know, hay baling thing. I, I pack a. Uh, I pack a uh, one gallon Gatorade mm-hmm. all summer. That's what we all have water jugs in the summer, and that's what I carry. And then uh, I think Rick's got a smaller igloo. Austin's got a another feller's got a big uh, like a those Yeti uh, missiles that they make. Oh, I've got yeah, one too. I've like got five hundred dollar water jugs there. Oh, mine's not that much. I got a Yeti one. No, it's Arctic. Yeah, so like I'm the not Yeti ones Yeti are like yeah. three hundred bucks, you know. So there's one of those floating around amongst everybody, and then other people just take like Gatorade bottles and freeze them halfway, and then just fill them with the sink. Mm. Yeah, that's that's what they do. Like yeah, they they drink the Gatorade first. And then they refill it with water and freeze it half full, and then they put water in it, and then they just pack that around. Yeah. That's... But then, like the within the first like drink or two, they're they're out of water. Yeah, because you don't. 
Doesn't really make some it, of it's frozen. Doesn't there. really make any sense to me. Like they do that shit, but no, uh, whatever turns them on. But yeah, anyway, this uh, ice flow flip straw tumbler unit is offered all the way up into a ninety six ounce thing, and it's ninety dollars. Ninety dollars. I, I I guess here's my point. You think you could ever do one of those ninety six <laughs> ounce steak challenges? Yes. Oh hell yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. 70 I, I think that. i've had what was it, the old the seven? old 96 the old 96 or that's right <laughs> that's right yeah. i don't know I, this is not a get off my lawn thing it's just a where in the hell did this come from post this or, or turvis his turvis did the same thing well sure and so did yeti and so did uh some whatever you know i i don't know i don't know where it started i guess is what what celebrity was seen with a stanley cup uh, yeah, it wasn't a, tum- a hockey player. Yeah, a tumbler, and and it just uh, made it go batshit nuts. That's, that's what I want to know. That's how it happens. Like when we were in school, like we we did, did trapper you, keepers. Did you ever carry trapper a water keepers. bottle in school? No, no, no. Because we had what water fountains. Water fountains. Zoe, it's and they just morning. always yell Every at the day. kid that was like that would just like hey, can I go throw the- that thing? Hey, like, can I? Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey, get your lips off of it, bro. Yeah. Ah. And you'd still drink out of it. Yeah. Hey, you stupid knuckle dragger. Get Save your some for the whale. <laughs> get the hell out of there. But like I like I can remember using up hall passes to go to the water. Oh fountain. yeah. Like, oh, hey, yeah. can I go to the water fountain? Hey, can I go get a drink of water? Hey, or where? I mean, where you just did the hands under the sink thing? Yes, I've done that too in the bathroom. Yeah. Yeah, I bet they don't do that anymore. No, because everybody's got these fucking <laughs> five hundred dollar cups to packing around. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know. That was it. I mean, I'm I just thinking about it because like as I oh, saw, no, I get it. I get it. As I saw our drink, so our drink cabinet is so full now that we have overfilled to another shelf with drink cups. You know, the problem is now is they're also such weird ass sizes that I feel like the, these new age tumblers don't fit in a standard cabinet any longer. No, because no, they're real, too tall. It's a real issue. They're too tall. And then you got all the freaking lids and straws. Now, that's and the only good the thing straw about brush. having the Yeti. T- we don't have no straw brush. Yeah. Well, I could use it. We so. do. <sighs> yeah. Super clean there. On 1025. <laughs> 1025. That's all I had, man. I just, uh, I was wondering about it. That's all I got. Um, <clears throat> so there was a hot debate a while back that I spotted on this social is, media. This is a good one. This is by a- some local folks. Dandy. And I was kind of surprised by some of the responses to it because I, I just didn't think that it would be the situation that it was. Point of sale fundraising campaigns, or as we probably know them, round up, round up your change mm-hmm. to a whole dollar at some of these establishments for a charity. So CVS will do some uh, McDonald's. They do the Ronald McDonald House and um, CVS. I think they'll do like Feeding America. Yeah. Uh, they've got a bunch of corporate partners. I think my electric are, bill I round up for yeah. something yes. that yes. they, they recognize. So I guess the first question, do you round up? Yes. Not every time, but mm-hmm. it, like my electric bill for sure. I'm elected on that. And then uh, other times just uh, hit or miss on whether I do or not. Like I don't ever round up at McDonald's. I, like, But anymore, I use the app. They asked me that. Okay, this is a stupid question. Mm-hmm. Not to hijack this for a second, but when you go through the drive-through and they say, "Are you using the mobile app today?" What does that mean if you say yes? That you have an order. So my order, order is order in, and I've there. got a pickup for my name or my. It's actually, I think McDonald's has like a number. I think they give you a number. So you've already paid for it and you everything. Paid you for it with your to, phone. You just drive through and pick it up. You just it's, have to write it out through the line. Then. Yeah. So if you go to uh, Chick Fil A, Subway, it's the same thing. I did it at Subway and Jasper just this week, and it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they want you to do that because they don't have the workforce in those places anymore because they're paying them twenty dollars an yeah, hour. I'm telling you what. And it boys. suits me fine to not have to wait on it. Yeah. Like it's they give you a time, or do you pick the time? Uh, It'll say I like pick 10 an minutes. ASAP or something, and I know that it's about a ten minute drive, so it's probably good. Sure enough, I got there. It's still warm. My cheese was melted. Everything was as I ordered. There it. is a 
fast food restaurant in our local town that I will leave nameless that has a list of things on its drive through menu that they are out of. And I'm talking like... If it's the same as the one in Jasper, it's that redheaded gal. Yes, sir. Yeah, it, the it one is. in Jasper always has a list. It's a there. crucial... It's a list of crucial items, uh, like, essential to make their business what their business is. Yeah, it's is. been that way for a couple weeks. It is trash. They sh- close it. Just shut the doors. Some people may want a salad. True. You mean like close in general or just close if you don't have that? Yeah, stuff? yeah. Just shut down until you get your damn truck. Well, it's a tough spot when you pull through and you order a Coca Cola Classic and they say we're out. Yeah. How do you run out of Coke? How do you run out of French fries? How do you run out of seasoned potatoes? How do you run out of pretzel buns? How do you run out of White chicken milk. strips? Yeah, like all of this shit. Yeah. Nutty. Yeah. It I is. don't know. But hard, anyway, to, hard to buy the groceries when you're paying that much for... I don't know that we're paying that much for... No, I get it. Okay, yeah, go can ahead, Casey. I'll, I'll, I can come back. Do you round oh, yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, do yeah, you yeah, round yeah. up? Yes, Ronald come, McDonald's so, house, I do. So a lot of the uh, conversation was circled around, well, that's just the company taking your money and using it for a donation. Like, they're using it for a write-off. And I was like, well, that doesn't sound right because that's not technically their money to ride off in right so i did some research and turns out that companies cannot claim donations made at checkout by customers as tax deductible donations as the company is only considered to be the collector companies can donate a percentage of their own profits up to 10 percent of their pre-tax income per year and i thought this was neat over a 30 year period Point of sale fundraising campaigns have raised over five point three billion dollars. So the conversation online was basically, uh, for instance, if you were using McDonald's as an example, yeah. One point that was raised was, well, McDonald's is just taking your thirty-seven cents, and that's a write-off for them. Even if that's the case, I'm okay with it because that thirty-seven cents is still going to Ronald McDonald House. Well, and that was I think and there that, should be some sort of benefit because they don't have to do it. They yeah. don't have to dick around with. You know what I find myself you know what I mean? all that out. Yeah. Yes, you know what I find myself doing more than I do this more at McDonald's than I do rounding up is if you if you have coin change coming back, like if you pay with cash, yeah, and you have coin change coming back. Under the under the drive through pay yeah, window, little bucket. the little bucket. I always say put the coins in there. I mean, and it may be sometimes it may be like ninety ninety five cents, ninety eight cents, whatever. Could be ninety nine cents. Could be ninety nine cents. Exactly right. I just and I'll say just put the coins in there. Number that, one, that is a perfect example why I'd be fine with somebody taking a tax write off because you're still putting labor at that. Somebody's got to go out there and empty it. Yeah, count it and right. and then put sort. it in an envelope and then somebody's got to do the paperwork to say yeah. you gave yeah. $700 to well, I just I was yeah. just surprised to see kind of the reaction of being against it because everybody's quick to mm-hmm. kick the greedy corporate fat cats. Mm-hmm. But you know what? You could be a uh, a greedy corporate fat cat, but if you're supporting an organization like Feed America yeah. Like that provides a lot of meals for a lot of yeah, kids. How and much communities. money would that program not have if the greedy corporate people weren't taking care of it? Yeah, so no I think shit. And like, I think that goes to a broader conversation is that's what gets lost in corporations in the world of corporations. They are everybody hates them. Oh, well, not everybody. That's a broad brush. But a lot of people say, I hate this corporation because of X, Y, and Z. There are some corporations that do some pretty shady shit. I, granted, I will give you that. We oh, have yeah. government watchdogs for all that. We try to, you try to police that, but you're talking about these giant monstrosities that are hard for businesses themselves to regulate because of the large size, which then people would say, well, break them up. Okay, I get it. What you're saying, though, we're so quick to look down upon corporations, but look at what corporations have done. And I'm not saying I'm a big pro-corporate guy, but I'm saying you want to say down with the king well who's going to take over yeah, and don't, that, don't buy it the hand that feeds it you yeah know? like there's this there's a level of sustainability from some of this stuff where you're like okay this is great so let's say you hate target down with target okay well what are you going to have then what are you going to have that's a, a probably a more 
nicer brand than what Walmart may be or some of these other ones. You hate Walmart. Down with Walmart. You know how many people Walmart employs? Mm, you know God. how many products Walmart ships around? And see, and I can't get it, even though it pisses me off. Like, I don't like not having a cashier. And everybody's always cussing Walmart because of the self-checkout. Man, it's just as tough to find people to work as it is, I imagine, to keep the money to pay them. Yeah. So uh, we still shop at Walmart. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, like, I, guess that's the, <laughs> I guess that's the thing that, like, I look at it. Like, some of that conversation was surrounded by, you know, I don't like to do it because they just use it for a tax write-off. Okay. So but if it goes you don't to, like to donate money. Well, which the which the thing of it is is false. Then, anyways, because obviously they can't claim that, right? And through the audit process, there's companies that audit these businesses, and oh, hey, you guys had an extra million dollars in change this year. How'd that happen? <laughs> oh, we just shook the couch cushions every other week. <laughs> you know, like, and that's these sophisticated accounting systems. All that person does is punch in that you rounded up, and guess where that money goes? Automatically goes, and then as those books come through. There is a reconciliation at the end of the day or end of the week or end of the month that that location says, okay, we took in $400 in donations. Here's the check for that that right. goes to do it. I don't know. I just I found it interesting because it was so quick to like dog on corporations. And then you start to think about it and you're like, those roundup programs is a very simple way to give something because then the follow up question is, is okay. What organizations do you donate to if you're not? Doing I was gonna say this? if you ask somebody where they donate, I imagine most folks wouldn't know how to donate if it wasn't for right for that sort for of. those kind of yeah. outlets. Well, and that's and so I always love it for Janelle and I. I'll be watching TV and the ASPCA commercial will come on. Oh my god! And I'll look. I'll look Sarah at McLaughlin. Yeah. Oh. I'll look at our two dogs. I'll look at our two dogs and I'll say, you little bastards, pay attention. Because you think you got it rough. This is could be you. Oh. And Janelle goes, you know the sad thing of it is? Is those organizations like that? And it happens to a lot of these organizations. Hey, for every dollar, how much of it goes to the actual cause? Uh, 20 cents. So 20 cents on the dollar goes... To the animals, you what know where the other hey, Sarah McLaughlin, you know where the other for, 80, you know the, uh, 80 cents per dollar goes. It goes to those greedy f corporate fat cats that you hate. The, that are uh, the corporation. What the hell was those? Remember those meal? Uh, the you bought this uh, stamp for twenty dollars or for one dollar, and it would uh, feed uh, a child and a starving child in Africa for. A, a week or some shit like that you know and yeah. it, it just makes you wonder like how how much of that money is actually making well that was you know? i remember uh because what was it with the american red cross mm. i forget what there there's an organization there's a website where you can track what it is per per dollar how much goes because there was a bunch of uh, i think it was the wounded warrior project oh they got raked over the coals yeah. because their number was high mm -hmm. in what it is and it just I guess the question of it is, people were more willing to go donate to ASPCA mm -hmm. because, oh, that commercial comes on, and then I get a cool T-shirt. But you wouldn't even consider going over to the Dubois County Humane Society and buy, and right. you don't even have to give them money. No. Hey, I bought 10 bags of dog food today. Yep. Our kids Take did them. that. Uh, I think it was at their, I'm not sure what birthday year it was, eight, seven, eight, somewhere in there, Skate Palace, and we said, in lieu of gifts, bring uh bring a bag of cat food or dog food yeah and then when we left the skate palace that day the whole the back end of the warden's van was squatting pretty low and we just backed her up to the front door of the uh yeah the old humane society and then and, and unloaded it over there and they know? appreciate and, and it hell yeah they do and it know? goes and it goes to those things but I, sure. I just i don't know you you get into tricky territory when you start talking about who you donate to and what organizations you don't oh there's to. a lot of there's a lot of them that uh well that was like with with my hair when i donated my hair i i donated to pantene like pantene pro v they have a like a hair thing where you donate your hair to like lock kind of just because they said locks of love they didn't they actually sell their surplus like the the, the hair that is not used uh. for wigs they sell their surplus to like for-profit wig companies whereas like pro v 
it's all it all stays in their network. Yeah. And and I, I don't know. I, I it didn't really yeah. matter to me, but like I thought that was kind of neat. But then like after I donated it, like they sent me a letter that said like your wig your hair was made for a wig, you know, for a person with da da da. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I, I just thought that was neat. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's cool. And I I don't know. It just you get into tree you start talking about corporation, but I just I had saw that and I had just been I think it was through McDonald's recently. Yeah, no they and they, they were they, like been would you it. like to round up? And I usually do. I mean it it's thirty cents and I don't know, Dave, this might be an O C D thing, but I like that nice even number. Mm. So if my receipt says fourteen dollars instead of thirteen dollars and sixty seven cents. Are you the guy at the gas pump like that goes to the even number? No, sometimes I'll just leave it on 01 so the guy that comes behind you thinks like, oh, man, that guy almost had it, or some random number. Do you go to the even? I you used just, to, but anymore her- I go to it clicks. But I like getting my change back because uh, – so like New Year's Eve, we were playing a horse game, which yeah. is a game where you use some dimes, and one of them shined at me funny. And it was a 1961 uh, dime, so it'll be 90% – silver content Hmm. and i found like a 1912 wheat penny because it was shining different in my cup holder one i I just yeah 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 yeah. no i get it i just enjoy that like it's just a little nerd thing that's like no i don't know that's i'm a i'm a big uh click it to an even on the gas pump but i also was informed by our friend uh kyle kelly that it's always it's it's not good to do that on certain vehicles. Why is that? Because of the too uh, full. The vent, yeah, the vents on the uh, fuel tank. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. Spoke dragon. You guys know who Neil deGrasse Tyson is? Yep. So I've always held him in pretty high, and I find him interesting. I watch his uh, TED talks specials on Netflix. I try to if he's on a podcast, I'll watch him. Yep. Uh, but I've been really, for some reason, stewing on him lately. Because I've not heard any argument against him. And if you listen to him talk on some of these podcasts, he's kind of a, comes off as a pompous asshole sometimes. Oh, yeah. And at first you think, well, if you're like the smartest dude on the planet, maybe you earned it. But then nobody's really arguing or fighting back against him that I can see. You try don't to, see like, much try to like, back check him and catch Yeah, him. like, hey, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I call bullshit. I don't see that very often. Right. So I did a little bit of research, and it's one of the, some president, I don't know, Clinton or somebody, appointed him to NASA to be the head of some sort of research. Mm-hmm. He's now over a museum of astronomy. I don't know. Okay. Somewhere. It doesn't matter. But so the topic says, is he that great of an astrophysicist, or is he just that great of a personality? Like I, I'm, I'm, tr- I'm, I'm starting to question whether or not he really is as smart as we think, or if he's just hoodwinked everybody and <laughs> you know he's just got us all fooled. Well, real quick, I did, I, I did some, you know, over the break, I looked at some stuff too, and I actually just said, what, what's his actual education? Like, what is his level of education? And it says he's got a PhD in astrophysics. Oh, sure, astrophysics from Columbia University. Graduated ninety one. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, he is a uh, like he is a uh, really smart guy, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like, I don't know what what was like. What is what are some like big uh, like discoveries that he's made? Uh, yes, yeah, that's thing. I don't know that he's actually got a whole lot to hang his hat on. If he's like, I don't know if he's made his own groundbreaking. The only thing it says here is, as a grad student, he worked to understand how stars and galaxies form and change over time. His discoveries about the process of star and galaxy formation and ev- evolution have furthered our understanding of okay. how the universe actually really works. So that would be something credible, because that's what I was looking for, is just what was his big break that made him the guy you had to go to to you know get the skinny on that sort of thing he it also says that he uh changed the world which i feel is pretty bold sure uh contributing to the research that established pluto as actually a dwarf planet he was on the council for nasa and played a large role ensuring that the hayden planetarium would remain intact 
So Hayden Planetarium is where he's the whatever his title is now, like yeah. uh, H H H D I C the Hayden H-D-I-C. Planetarium. Yeah. I said museum, but yeah, yeah, Planetarium is what he's over. Makes an ungodly amount of money there every year, right? Isn't that funny how that scra- back scratch works? Yeah, like oh, we got to keep it open. We should shut it down. Maybe we shouldn't, and then pay me like ten million dollars a year or something. <clears throat> Here's the problem. A year, whatever. Here's the problem. I don't mean to rain on anybody's parade, but this is the problem that has developed. That you put these people on a pedestal. Not you, and you know what I'm saying that in general. Yeah, 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 yeah. You put these people on a pedestal that they can't be questioned, <laughs> or they're above reproach, and they're just part of the on both sides the governmental swamp that make livings off of American tax dollars when in really nobody gives two shits what he's done because Mm -hmm. it doesn't affect you or I, but he collects an absorbent salary to be this talking head that has his own political agenda and his own agenda of what he wants to do. I think he did like a $10 million deal with Netflix to do a series of specials. Yeah. So that on top of, and it's not, so I think it, it's like a million a year to be this. But I think these whatever, guys, they but, think they become above reproach. Yeah. That's and that's why I love like a Joe Rogan who will have anybody and everybody on to discuss. Because obviously Joe Rogan is of a level of intelligence. But a lot of times you find out when you start questioning these people, they crumble or they just get mad and storm off or it turns into say, an argument. Have you seen him on Rogan? No, because I don't like Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh, okay. I, he could get hit by a bus tomorrow, and it wouldn't affect gotcha. my day one bit. It's not deGrasse either. I don't care. It's deGrasse. Yeah. You want to know some fun facts about him? Sure. <laughs> he once considered becoming an exotic dancer. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he hosts his own podcast also. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey. Star Talk. You, hey, you have two things in common. Star Talk? Oh. Is that what it's called? I believe so. You have two things in common he with him. He also yeah. requested and got the night sky changed in the movie Titanic. Hmm. They must have had the stars all screwed up, so he had to oh, change good it in the God. movie. You don't watch the Titanic because, oh, the stars, look at those. That's not factually correct. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I mean, I think he's smart for sure, but like I'm, I, not, I'm not discrediting his level of intelligence, but I'm just wondering if he's if his everything intelligence he's cracked gives up rise to, be, right. to what has done. No, mm-hmm. he's a figure of people that put him on this pedestal above reproach, and I don't know. I just don't stand it very well because it just is what it is. Star talk. That's nuts, man. How many followers does he have or subscribers to Probably not as much as this brilliant podcast. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know, dude. I think he, uh, I think he's legit, but. Oh, 2.7 million followers. Yeah, that's wild. 2.8. Hmm. Almost as good as us. I think, uh, I think he's also, his voice is used in, uh, some rap albums that I've heard of. Really? Yeah, I think so. Okay. That's weird. Yeah. I don't know. What makes... Do you... It's just... It's actually probably little stuff like that, like gimmicky things that make me think, is that what's more important? If if you're if you if you're doing the gimmicky thing, I guess it could be just because it's fun you have the opportunity to do it. But... Are you relying on the gimmicky thing because you can't back up right, what yeah. got you to the gimmick? Right, yeah. So I don't know. Like, like it's the just, actual research side of it. You're looking for the guy that rolls his sleeves up and is actually making discoveries. So his his he mentions him lots of times. He'll reference, and I can't think of the guy's name, but he did the small blue dot speech. He was the first one to do the show that Neil deGrasse Tyson does now. Um, Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan. Yeah, and I feel like Carl he was recruited. It said that the Negra- the Grass Tyson was actually recruited by Carl Sagan, like while DeGrasse Tyson was in high school. Right. So he must have been, you know, scratching at some shit, some pretty big shit early on too. When 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 Neil was young. But the thing is, the more the longer I live, the more I see. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, deceit, I think, 
Mm, like you can pull the wheel, the the wool over somebody's eyes. Somebody pulls you under their wing, and then you earn that from them and that respect. How much is that person holding you up to that standard once they've decided internally that you are there? Mm. And then if you're that young when you get pulled into it, are you just riding on the coattails? Oh yeah, yeah of the sure. of yeah. the recommendations. Yeah. Or did you actually earn Somewhat, what you Some had? would consi- consider like brainwashed almost. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Carl Sagan was a popular public advocate of skeptical science inquiry and the scientific method. He pioneered the field of exobiology and promoted the search for the cosmos. That's wild, huh? Mm-hmm. His I- famous quote was, a universe that is unknowable is no fit place for a thinking being. Uh, come again. A universe that is unknowable is no fit place for a thinking being. That doesn't even make sense. How you figure sure it does. If that's why thinking people are always trying to expand their knowledge of what's out there. Because if it's unknowable. It's unfit for a thinking person. So if you're a thinking person, you need to make it knowable so that you fit there. And until that is done, you're going to keep thinking and striving for more. Right. I think you got to do a lot of drugs to make up shit like that. I don't think so, man. You're just not on the same uh, intellectual and educational level as these people. And it's okay to admit that you're not. Right? I wouldn't say educational level. He is a PhD. I have a JD. We're both doctors. Esquire. 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 Yeah, anyway. I don't know. But, I mean, here's the thing. I don't think Neil deGrasse Tyson's a sham. I don't think he's a sham. I don't. But he does a lot of that stuff out there that's kind of Bill Nye the Science Guy. Right. But when he nerds out on them TED Talks and stuff like that about stars and... Like, the guy's gas- way smarter than me, and I recognize that. Yeah, yeah, that's but what But is I was he, getting. like, Stephen Hawking smart? Like, I don't know. I, 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 I'm just curious... Well. We can talk about Stephen Hawking. Was he really that smart, though? <laughs> if not, somebody behind him. Or did that computer just talk to him when he wanted to talk to? Him? Or when he went to those islands? <laughs> Have you seen those TikTok? <laughs> no. oh, oh, some of the meme work on those is great. Phenomenal. Uh, I don't, here's the thing, though. If it's something that a lot of people don't, and I think this goes to your point, Dave. If it's something that a lot of people don't know something about, or care to know something about. You could be of average intelligence, but if it's something people don't know about, then how do you really know? Right. When you compare titans of the industry, and you don't see these guys sitting down to debate each other on this, that, or another, because it would ruin, it would ruin this. And that's the only thing I can't figure out. Like you don't see anybody, really questioning his statements and maybe it's so is that because it's so well known in that community like maybe he didn't come up with it or is it because he is so well renowned in that community because he can back it up or is it just nobody else in the community gives a shit because he's a movie star and he's not an astrophysicist (laughs) and those folks are more critical thinkers well think about think about the Heart, like a current event situation, the ouster of Harvard's president. When you look at the plagiarism that's alleged to have oh, occurred, yeah. here is somebody that has made it to the pinnacle, and there's arguments on both sides of this coin, depending on your political beliefs. But let's say one of the most recognized financial institute, not financial institutions, educational, educational institutions with, I think, one of the largest endowments in the world. Made it to the top, but then all of a sudden, when you piss off a certain segment of the population that starts digging, and you start to realize, well, just the plagiarism is unreal. Then that shatters that. You know what I mean? So do you do you keep your enemies even closer to where your people that ride your coattails, it's all a house of cards? Yeah. And if you piss one of them off and you say, well... You know that TED Talk that he gave back in Vegas in 2022? He's full of shit. That was all my work. He just took it for his own. You know, and that's the world of 
non-disclosure agreements and look at how many engineers like Gag let's say orders. let's say you develop a product for Kimball Electronics. Yeah, you, anything I do you, there or ig- on their equipment is there. Exactly. Think about all those engineers at 3M. Think about how many products we run into every day that are 3M. And it was some engineer that got paid their engineer salary why 3M made billions of dollars off of it. Mm-hmm. That happens every day because these people go to work for them, they discover something, and then it's like, oh, well, you might have discovered it, but it's actually mine. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that I think is a bad thing about academia is we look at higher education as a, a possibility to be an expression of thought and debate and discuss and discourse discourse hmm. that's not right what am i thinking of discourse yeah i think you're right yeah d-i-s-c-o-u-r-s-e yeah. but it's really not it is it's a chokehold or a choke point of ideologies depending on where you go to school that makes that suffer it just i mean that's where a lot of people say the higher academia in this country is a fraud mm-hmm. hmm. Yeah. Think about that deep thought for you. Mm. I don't know if I can get any deeper. <laughs> Been there. Yeah. Been real. Better tie a two by four on your ass. So you hey, what uh it. what what's going on this week with the old dear Dutchman? Well, that's a good question. Uh we need some submitted. We have uh you know, we've been very fortunate enough to have um some wonderful, wonderful fans. Uh, that really push stuff out, but we need some more to come in, uh, because we just need to re- reload the yeah. pantry. Uh, so here's one from Brianne Rainey, Aww. friend of the program, lives down there on 161. Do you ever wonder what things look like from other people's eyes? Ooh. Like we both look at the sky and have learned that what we are looking at is blue. But does my blue look the same as your blue? When we look at someone, we know it's them because that's what we ourselves have learned. But do you see the same thing that I do? Side note, I hate driving at night because there are so many light reflections. I just recently learned that not everyone sees that way. Apparently, I have an astigmatism. I just thought that's what nighttime driving lights look like to everybody. Who knew? So what do you fellas think about that? I don't know. Because like they say, when you see, when you see oh, yourself yeah, in yeah, the yeah. mirror, like my green and your green are not the same green. Yeah, I feel like it'd be hard for them to be the same green. Because I've got two eyes. If I close my left eye, I have two eyes too. I got to remember which one's which. One of my eyes is cooler. My right eye is cooler than my left eye. So when I close my left eye and look out, everything's got a little, I don't know, tanner almost like shade to it. And then my right eye, it's a little bit brighter. Interesting. So I imagine everybody's got little quirks like that. And if I can tell those differences in my own vision from one eye to the next. Then other people would be able to know. Yeah, so out of all the billion people in the world, on average, you know, you have two eyes. Maybe some people don't have two. Maybe some people don't have any. But I'd say that variation uh, occurs through all that at an even grander scale. So, you know, if I've got that change, that would be. But I guess to her point, you don't know what you don't know. You would never know because you're because you're still looking at it. Like this is silver. Yeah. And you know it's silver because you've always been told that's silver. But what I see and what you see could be two completely different colors. That could be what you see, maybe what I see when I see what I call purple. And we would never know because we're always going to both call it silver. Yeah. Um, Do you ever heard of the band called the Butthole Surfers? Yeah. You remember their song they did called Pepper? That's the main reason I know the Butthole Surfers. Yeah. I don't mind the sun sometimes, the images it shows. I can taste you on my lips and smell you in my clothes. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon and sugary and softly spoken lies. You never know just how to look through other people's eyes. That's what made me think of it. Okay. Because you don't, like I see you and you see me, 
but I'll never know how you see me and you'll never know how I see you. Well, see, and that's what they say about when you look in the mirror, yeah. your perception of you is different than what people right. actually see. Yeah, For sure. Is. Yeah. That's nuts. That's deep shit. Well, so there's a, I dabbled in a philosophy class in undergrad. Oh. That's the beauty of going to a liberal arts school. Hmm. Um, and it was called epistemology, which is the study of thought. Piss? Epistemology. <laughs> I think that's I'm saving the right, saying it right. Epistemology. I, I have no idea. I can't help you on that one. Well, so I got faith in you. Anyways, epistemology is the study of thought. And basically, the first day in the class, this guy, uh, look at that, Google listens. Epistemology, the theory of knowledge, especially with regard to its methods, validity, and scope, is the investigation of what distinguishes justified belief from opinion. And basically, he started out class was, how do we know those leaves on that tree are green? Well, I mean, that's just, we do know they're green because I can look at them and I know they're green. Well, how do you know that? I don't know because I've been told that. Well, how do you know that what you've been told is true and correct, which is what this is. Mm -hmm. It's that study of knowledge of how do you prove that. Right. But I think it's wild because a lot of people, you know, there's that old expression, another person's trash is another man's treasure. So there's more than one way to skin a cat. Yeah, that's very true. But I don't know that I have much on that because yeah. it's just kind of. Well, I know, like, I mean, in the literal thinking, in literal sense, I mean, there's colorblind people or pe people that are slightly vision impaired that are not going to see see things the identically the same way that you and I would see them. So, yeah. Well, so if you think about it that way, you know. And I always thought that... Uh, and with the whole astigmatism thing, that's just... in that, with the glaring of the lights, <clears throat> where you get those big starbursts on oh, yeah, a headlight. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why I can't wear glasses. Because I always... I guess I just probably didn't keep my glasses clean enough. Right. But I'll get them at night. So, Brian, that's a great question. I mean, it's got us stumped. I mean, we all believe we see things different, but then you play by this same set of rules. Mm -hmm. It's really... Probably not enough, uh, you know, deep thought type drugs consumed no, no, no. to provide such a deep response. That's a that's a good one. It's so a real head scratcher. Good news is it's time. It's time for the Merkley and Sons Choice Cut Questions of the Week for the fellas. Let's hear this week's ad. Welcome to the Merkley and Sons Choice Cuts Questions of the Week for the fellas, sponsored by Merkley and Sons, the ultimate destination for meat enthusiasts. I'm back on the breakfast kick. They say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and I happen to agree. Whether you're frying up some of Merkley's delicious bacon or have some sausage links on the griddle, Merkley's is your go-to spot for your breakfast. I like to think about it like this. No breakfast is complete without one of Merkley's quality meats on your plate. Check them out today and see how you can build a better breakfast for you and your family. Big thank you. To Bradley yeah. and John Boy. Some of the best fellers I know. Do we want to let the cat out of the bag? No, we can. Don't Go ahead, matter. Dave. Yeah, they may have come and graced our little uh, studio here this past weekend. Well, two weeks ago, I guess, when you hear this. Mm -hmm. With their presence. Uh, yeah, so they came out and had a conversation with us about business and, uh, you know, what it means to be a, you know. A meat cutter man. Meat empire. Yeah. <laughs> So it was good talk. So we're working on it in that pretty busy week for me. So it'll be a, it'll probably be another week or two till you see it, even from this. But we gotta get everything cleaned up and edited up and made pretty. That's I just right. wish the cameras were rolling when we all hugged. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because that was a, uh, it's a big moment. Yeah, because those guys make you feel dwarfed. Yeah. All right. Well, we uh, got choice cut questions come from somebody very familiar with the program. Mr. Bradley Ohanian. Awesome. I think it's his third round of questions. He keeps sending them in. That's we'll fine. Keep getting We're going to gonna keep answering. Bradley's been wondering who wins in the following categories. A 50-yard foot race. I got both of you. Oh, between us. Yes. This is all competition oh, between I us. I was waiting for a list of competitors. Oh, uh, like Big Mace, oh. Smoke, Casey. 50 yard 50 yard dash his foot in the boot we could take him yeah i can definitely I, i'll be both of you right now there's no chance you're in a boot dude i mean you're talking 
it doesn't say right now. Well, I mean, I'd lace it up right now, anyways, and I'd fight through. It's like Jordan flu game. No, I still think I'd I'd have you. We may have to see that really this plays out. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, Not fifty me. yards. I'm, I'm slow. Who's your winner? Oh, I yeah, I'm probably you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, buddy. Yeah. Uh, eating competition, Fourth of July style, twelve minutes. All you can eat hot dog and bun. I've got no chance. You guys are yeah. screwed. Yeah, yeah, I'm not making it out of that. There's no way. F- I'd, I'd take that one. Uh, a fist fight. I know you guys would never fight each other, but hypothetically. I don't know that he knows us very well. We could bust out into a fist fight one day. <laughs> Fisticuffs. Dave might be done being called bitch shins and could go from there. That's why I don't think. I think it'd be a draw. I think we all know each other's weaknesses too well. I'd I feel be, like Mace I'd, would I'd take be, a punch better I'd, than I'd anybody. I'd beat both your asses. Uh, only if you got a hold of me. I think you well, underestimate. Yeah. I don't. You've never been in a fight. Yeah, I have. A real fight. Yeah. You have. Dude, I lived in a fraternity house for four years. I played rugby for three years. I could take a punch. I could take a punch. Is that <laughs> what they're calling it? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Uh, a trivia contest. All subjects combined, history, sports, pop culture. Sports would kill Dave. Yeah. yeah. You're terrible at history. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's probably right up my alley. Yeah. That's why you make a perfect trivia team. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll find out. A do-it-yourself fix-it competition. Oh, Dave's yeah. winning that one. Yeah. A karaoke. Uh, come on, Brad. Karaoke contest? God, duh. You got the voice of an angel over yeah. here. Yeah. I mean, he's he's saying before. Mixture of Fergie and Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Uh, a game of horse. Like the basketball horse? Yeah. Okay. I'm pretty tactical on that. I might I might I might I might stand a chance on that. I've seen your jump shot. You ain't winning shit. I don't know, man. It also a lot of that's the luck of the draw. That's it what is. I mean. Who you follow? That's what I'm saying. I'm pretty tactical. I think it'd be situational. Yeah. An 18 hole round of golf, stroke play, no shots given. Oh, you. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Casey's got it. And then if it, Teddy hoops because he completes us, then, then yeah, it all yeah, works yeah, out yeah. well. A drinking competition, like a K Grace. I don't know, boys. If you, if you give me a week to prepare, like. What do you need a week to prepare for? So I haven't, had, on, a, on I haven't had a beer in almost a month right now to date. And if we decided to go through said competition tomorrow, I would I would fail miserably. But if you gave me like if it, this if I was not fresh off the wagon, like if I was in full summertime swing, hey, dry January's over tomorrow. Well, I'm not doing that. I started late. I think oh. he's just doing dry life. Oh, yeah. dry life. Damp. Damp. Oh, Shout out Matt Mesmer. Yeah, but it, uh, if if I, if I was in full summertime swing, you guys would struggle. If we're drinking beer, I'd take that. I'd take that wager, and I think I'd come out on top. Do you believe that? One hundred ten percent. I don't. I've seen you drunk way more times than I have. You've seen me drunk. I don't know about that. Are you kidding me? Uh-uh. What? I don't really get drunk that often. I don't know. I feel like I've seen you. Uh, I've surpassed you of the night many a time. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Shots, shots fired. fired. <laughs> like, I don't know how many uh, 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 driveway fires I've let myself out. Is true story. <laughs> I and those are where touche. Next question. I, well, I, I just wanted to expound upon this a little <laughs> bit because I think if you're talking about. I think the thing of it is our strengths would be like all day drinking beer. Yeah. Yes. Like I think if that's we're going to sit here and we're going to drink beer and yes. the first one, the first and second ones to pass out and lose. Right. Like it's going to be a long day. Yeah. I think in a chugging competition, I don't know. Like I don't know. I wouldn't win a chugging competition. I yeah, I'll buy that. Yeah. Right. Like a beer bong or a shotgun. I, I, I can't do like a beer bong. Yeah. And then I think I'd get you if you go shot for shot. Like if we were going to line up shots at tequila and see how that worked out. I'd barf on the first one. Mm-hmm. Even I, like whiskey, we do well. Mm-hmm. I do pretty well with that. Yeah, I, I think I'd be all right. As I long did as twenty-one in a row one time. Yeah, I don't know if that's a big thing to brag on. I, I bought know. nine shots of Jaeger one night and that's for myself. No, of course. 
That's about the only thing I'd ever take shots of was Jägermeister. And then he said, sorry, wanted to get to 10, couldn't think of anything else. But I think they're pretty good Those questions. are good ones, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, there we are. So, hey, it's time. It is time. <laughs> it is time. Unfortunately, our time has come to an end. We've got cloves of garlic and other stuff to take down. But uh, <laughs> I'm not eating one of them bastards before I go home to bed, that's for sure. Yeah, Justine kick you out. Yeah. You'll be napping out on the couch. It is time to hear from our friends at Hope Outdoor Power for the last pass. The Last Pass is proudly sponsored by our friends at Hofe Outdoor Power. Now let's talk about the current weather situation. It's been all over the map so far. We have had super cold and very mild, some snow and some rain. However, as we all know, conditions can change swiftly here in southern Indiana. Our golden rule is simple. Don't get caught unprepared. It's crucial to act preemptively, especially when it comes to your equipment whether it's your tractor, side-by-side, snowblower, or any other essential gear. Hope Outdoor Power is here to assist you in upgrading your equipment or ensuring that your existing machinery stays in top-notch condition. Visit Hope Outdoor Power today and be well prepared for whatever weather comes our way this year. Hey, there big big thanks. Big thanks to Bradley and uh, Jared, Nick, and all the fellas over there, Polly, all the guys over at Hope Outdoor Power. Head over there today to uh, check out some of their awesome deals on side-by-sides, Kubota products, and uh, really anything you would need outdoors. Yeah, because as, as you it, start they getting, got it all. As you start getting your tax checks back. That's mm-hmm. right. It's a good place to go spend them. That is right. Yeah, they'll appreciate it. Big fella, we got? Uh, well, coming up here, it is uh, fifth grade basketball for the girls is over. No. Fifth grade basketball for the boys. They got one more game left. Um and then we'll go into a little uh, tournament season with some some other extracurricular stuff. We're doing some baseball stuff down at Evansville at a little indoor facility down there a couple days a week or one day a week here for a while. Um, just kind of transitioning. It's I'm done with the cold weather. Yeah. Christmas is over. Hunting season's gone. Um I'm ready for fishing. Dave texted me today and said, buddy, I'm ready for the birds to be chirping and the smell of the wild onions and uh, that first uh, oh. first grass mowing and shit like yeah. that. I'm I'm ready for it. I, I mean, I don't want to wish away time, but... Uh, Man, I'm ready. For I'm that. ready. Like Dave said, I'm ready for a, a <laughs> pair of shorts and a long sleeve t-shirt and a and a f- nice fire outside. Yeah, you know, in the springtime. But uh, yeah, I'm ready to I'm ready to move on. But uh, I'm ready for my foot to quit hurting. Hopefully, I can get this shit figured out. And uh, uh, what if it's not that? What do you mean? What if it's just that fatty tumor is not doing anything to it? Well, you can clearly see on the ultrasound that it's pushing pushing the nerve tunnel shut, which is causing the impingement. So like, it's already like, that's already a known fact. So why don't they just have surgery on it right away? Well, cause they got to see what they're actually surgerying. Just on. go in there and cut. Yeah. Just go in there blind. Boy. You have that, you just can... fillet that fat <laughs> foot wide open boys. That's what I say. <laughs> Hell, I got a knife. Hell yeah. Let's do it right now. Uh, but, uh, old uh drop foot. I'd like to get this behind <laughs> me. Um, uh, other than that, I don't really have anything. Just uh, live long and prosper, and uh, mental health's a real thing. Look, uh, ask for help if you need it. Dave, what you got? Well, I'd like to apologize for my drop last week. I'm not having a smokerism. Yeah? But I've got one. I wrote it down this week. Yes! So, here it is. I'm ready. Happiness cannot be obtained. It can only be enjoyed. The only way you can enjoy happiness is if you're prepared, arms wide open, to see it when it's presented. So the more you hang on to all the horse shit that keeps you from your happiness, the less likely you will be to ever find it. That's what I got. Nice. (laughs) Makes sense. Checks out. What you got, bub? Uh, shoot. Favorite time of the year. I love when we get started into early season baseball. God, mud. Um, <laughs> this is my least favorite time. Uh, yeah, I get that. It's a tough time for driveways and uh, potholes. This is dirty winter. Yeah, but uh, I enjoy moving through January. 
January is such a tough month mentally for a lot of people. You get the nice holidays and you roll over into the cold and it's a dog fight. And now we get into February and February is a dog fight too, but uh, don't worry. March is right around the corner and hopefully good weather and everything like that. But uh, just uh, 2024 is off to a wild start. And um, a lot of people would let it, you know, what's transpired here these first three weeks, four weeks of January of 2024, you know, ruin a year, but, uh, bound and determined that, uh, going to make it a good one. Going to make it a good one here. we got some good momentum coming. we got a lot of things on the yeah. plate, smoke. Irons in the fire. We got to get uh, irons in the fire. We got to get a new merch line out for the spring, a golf line out. Mm. It's going to be time to be playing golf. Time to start uh, playing the damn barbecue competition yeah it's right around the corner it'll be here before you we know. got a bunch of stuff going on but we're a little three-man operation plus couch guy yeah. and our meat guy which you know it's cool we got a couch guy and a meat guy but yeah couch guy really doesn't do anything for us meat guy brings us meat mm -hmm. you know i think we gotta find a guy yeah. that maybe does some of this other stuff right but anyways it is uh it's good to get back with you guys always a pleasure um you know, even as this little business grows, we uh, still get together and have fun with it, I think. That is right. Because Sunday was a blast. Hell Janelle, yeah. Janelle wasn't real happy. <laughs> You'll have that on them big jobs. And you know what? With that, Dutchman out. out.